All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We got a lot of great games for you guys today. Uh, a lot of great players as well. So we've got Julian K versus Ketterboy and Soldier versus Kaiser Klein in this round of 16 for the fall championships. So a lot of exciting stuff for you on the board. Yes, it is. It will be. And we're really excited for you guys to come along and join us. Lionheart with the raid, and he will be hopping in in just a moment, and we will get on the way. Well, hello there, good sir. You right? I'm just going to grab a sandwich, mate, and I'll be right back, okay? All right. I can that game, but oh, yeah, I'm, I need a fucking sandwich after that. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, everybody? How are we doing? What's up, everybody? How are we doing? I see some big people, big boys and girls in chats. Love to see it. Love to see it. All right. if I have that of it, uh, for me or oh okay okay all right so everybody while we wait for Lionheart to come back I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about the first game and it is going to be Julian K playing as the Spanish versus Ketterboy's Brits. So very uh, interesting one. This was indeed a blind pick and the first map is Himalayas. And so, you know, typically speaking, Brits kind of are a counter pick in some sense to Spain. But of course, Spain has a lot of value or a great answers and responses to Brit at the same time so very exciting for that one to see how it'll play out all right we've got the predictions up everybody so let's get some points up and let us know who you think is going to be the winner and of course, if you win some points, you can use those for any of the, uh, um, you know, little redemptions uh, for Esoc. Andy, one by one, asking in the chat, on what ELO are you at the moment at M Hong PA? Uh, I think I'm at something in the 15s right now. Uh, um, yeah, so nothing, nothing crazy, nothing spectacular. Uh, um, but it's, we've been playing a bit of everything. What's up, Chosen? Shout out, Chosen. Last cast together. That was great. Good fun, indeed. Is, I guess so. <laughs> all right, everybody, just before we get started, I want to remind you all about a special that Twitch is offering, and it's September, so you get 30% off on subs up until October 1st. So uh, our sub goal, we're at 63 out of 100, so, you know, we're almost there, and last 
few streams we've been getting a lot of great interaction with you guys if you guys are enjoying please let us know let us know throughout the stream if there's anything we can update or if there's anything you guys would like to see in the future um but yeah i have the chat up on the side through the games as well so i'll be able to read what you guys are saying to us throughout All right, we're going to send you guys over to the map intro for Himalayas in game number one. The upper Himalayas are home to the tallest mountains on earth. No trade route reaches this almost inaccessible area. Around the player's bases, its range of cliffs and choke points creates a greatly defensible enclosure but the scarce resources might force you to expand your reach on the map. Be careful not to get trapped between the mountains. Alright, so Lion's eating over here. I'll get us underway. Welcome everybody to the ESOC Autumn Championship round of 16. We've got a good one today on Himalayas between Ketterboy and Julian K. The goat, the self-proclaimed goat, but we'll see if he, uh, the Bible he has written is going to come and help him out here because he's playing against Spain today as Brit and Lion. I know, um, traditionally speaking, people may consider Brit to be a soft counter to Spain. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think Brits have a slightly favorable matchup. I played this matchup numerous times as Spain. You, the, the biggest thing with Spain is you've got to be, you, you just have to be super careful about diving in. Spain want to obviously get their two Falcon Nets and start applying pressure, but you have to be super careful when you do that against Brits. And Brits have a couple of reasons why. The main reason is what do villagers get more? Uh, what do Brits do more better than anyone else? They get villagers. What can villagers do? They can smack and pummel Falcon Nets for 10 damage a piece. So if you just do, if you had like a 30 to 40 villager pool with like Musk Huss, Spain is going to get absolutely clapped. Their cheaps are going to get absolutely clapped. So that you have to be super careful about that. So um, you have to kind of play strategically. You have to adapt depending on what Brits are doing as well, because Brits can they Brits can rush this. They can be aggressive. They can uh, they can mana boom and be uh, super greedy. Brits have Brits have uh, lots of different ways of doing this. So I think as the Spain player here, you have got to be careful. You've got to understand what your opponent is doing, what the Brit player is doing, and adapt accordingly. It's not easy, though. Yeah, I agree. And we saw uh, Br uh, Julian's deck there, very standard, and it looks like he has some options for skirms in H4 with Peninsular Gorillas. If we look at Ketterboy's deck here, very standard stuff. He does have Refrigeration, uh, Gentleman of the Pike. I know that's a recent community favorite. And, of course, three Rockets. No GMT, no Church card, so we won't be seeing any of that in Ketterboy's build here. He has 17 yeah. bills at 220, so that's really nice. Uh, pretty standard things. Spain going for capitalism now. Yeah, a little bit good. There's no GMT. Uh, <laughs> I can't expect GMT every single game now, but it is what it is. Um, this map as well. Look at the look at the herd for Julian. Like, where is his next herd? He's got one behind his base, but that is not particularly good. Um, and he's got one kind of to the right of him, but that's quite a while away. And He's got a big tree kind of... Uh, he's got one to the left as well. But again, these aren't great herds. So if I was Julian, that would be something I would be being super cautious about. And I, I would want to start herding that in as soon as possible. Absolutely. And this might be a good situation for Brit because they can just spread their manners around the map and really get all of those herds outside of the base in early and also just have line of sight around their base and we see now some vills already scattering around the map towards those three herds that have been identified so that's going to be really nice for him and then just putting down a market getting a lot of wood for probably more manners and going up from there julian going for a second trading post greedy super super greedy yeah. that is a uh, that is really risky that is really really risky against and especially with that forward villager yeah, that's, um, I'm not sure that's a good shout. Yeah, I totally agree because that Vill will be able to put down a forward barracks and then 
that TP is not going to get much value for how long it will have been up. However, will, you know, with rods and dog support and a tower to protect that TP, it could potentially be uh, saved. But we'll see how that turns out. Okay, Hongo, I've got a question for you. So there's, there's been a lot of uh, memes and uh, trolls in the community. Uh, it's not hard to guess who. Uh, talking about Brits recently and Brits having, quote unquote, no Civ bonus. What are your thoughts on uh, Brits having no Civ bonus? Well, um, <laughs> I, I do have eyes and I can read the civilization description and, um, you know, getting a 35, 40 wood villager is pretty nice. I'm not going to lie. Um, and yeah, so that's their Civ bonus for all of you trolls in the chat there. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. What about their free map pack as well? Of course, with the line of sight, you get the gas yep. lighting at the church. That's a fantastic little Best bonus. Best eco in the game. Best eco in the game. I Best know. Best skirmish no, unit not, in I'm, the game. I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to agree with that for necessarily. I mean, early game eco uh, definitely, yeah. but... Uh, I mean, you can't say Longbow is the best skirm in the game when we have Abyss, right? No, no, I, I mean, like, crossbow. Crossbow. Like okay, H2, okay. H2, H2 crossbow. Okay, yeah. Well, that's, that's essentially uh, what they are, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, fair, fair, fair. But uh, anyways, we do see the two forward towers coming down in contestion for this trading post here. Batch of Musketeers being made by Ketterboy. Julian is close to aging up with 700 wood coming in. Man in chat said nine pot per house. <laughs> oh, you chat, you goddamn trolls. <laughs> He's not wrong. He's not wrong, honestly. He, I gotta oh, give him that one. Oh, God, God. <laughs> All right, what we got going on here? So we got five masks going straight for the top TP, which is interesting because I like that. He's uh, He doesn't want to go straight for that middle TP because Julian's done a nice job putting a tower down and, and defending it, but... This is fine for Brits. You know, Julian, again, it's, it's okay for Julian as well, to be honest with you, because, and why are those musketeers chasing? Oh, I'm not sure I like this. Uh, maybe, maybe it's a, again, I, I, it's, it's difficult to say what, what's, what, what gets you more value, you know, keeping some TCs, uh, some villagers inside a TC or trying to siege down that, that, um, that TP. However, he's going to lose these three musketeers. So it's just a complete waste of five musketeers for very little. He takes down, he gets 45 XP, but he loses four Musketeers for very, very little. Um, again, this is buying Julian so much time right here. Um, you know, so he's going to be happy with this. The, the two TPs are still up. Regardless if they're going to get taken down, they're going to provide lots of uh, XP here for Julian. Again, look at Julian's herd. You can see that top one. He's trying to herd it, and it's kind of walked away from him, unless there's been a back herd. And Julian has only decided to go walkies for one of the herds. If Brits have, uh, if they scouted this well, which I think he has, yeah, we're on his line of sight. Uh, oh, no, okay, maybe not. But if he scouts this better and understands that, he's going to be really hard up for herds. He can he can really adapt accordingly and, and kind of really contain Julian here. Yeah, absolutely. And if he understands the symmetry of the map, he might be able to figure out that. And he is walking up towards that direction with the Musketeers and the five. Oh, he only gets out three husks with that batch. But uh, coin is now being shipped for the classic Brit timing. And the bows are out for Julian with some Musketeers here. And yeah, so that TP got a lot of value. Of course, still has the middle one. But uh, curious to see what Spain will be shipping next from here. As he needs is to take that outpost down. He yeah, needs he to take Julian's outpost down. I have no idea why he's allowed that to stay uh, uh, basically in the middle of the map protecting a TP. Like, all Julian has to do here is, is ship Rodoleros or make Rodoleros, then ship two Falconets. And I don't understand how Brits can defend this. Yeah, at this point, I mean... He, is, he does not have veteran musks yet, but um, the Hussar is getting onto the crossbows here, doing some nice tanking, and he takes down the crossbows, and he does, he has outmassed him here quite nicely with the musketeers, but here comes the falconets, and that's a nice volley there. <laughs> chat, why is chat saying GG? He lost eight expos, for goodness sake. <laughs> <What are you? laughs> the level of vax eating, man. Two facts are out. 
Lancers are on the way. Uh, personally, I would like to make... I would make five Rodoleros here. It's obvious that Cav are coming in. And Musketeers, yes, they're good. But but Julian doesn't want to sleep on the job. Oh, that's... He, just even that that many seconds oh, almost took those two Falconers out of position. But he put them in a really nice choke point. Uh, Minutemen now. Dogs, where is Dogs? His hero the is nowhere died to be in seen. age one. Yeah, in transition what it died. Is so Julian that was... doing? Oh, the Falconets are going to go down here. And the Minutemen are just coming. Are they going to get timed with the Lancers? I Oh, the Falconet is still alive. Minutemen and Lancers. That is terrible. I, I'm not going to lie. I was watching those Hazards. And those Hazards were not targeting the Falconets as efficiently as they should have done. And, and chat, you're right. It's GG. But it's GG to Spain. What you're saying? I honestly don't know how those Falconets survived because those Hus seem to have positioned oh. themselves in their, into that little gap perfectly. And Brits lost all of their tempo now. 2K score up. I mean, <laughs> that just played into Julian's hands so well. Normally, what in this matchup, if Brits take down the two Falconets without losing his entire army, he wins the game. If Absolutely. Julian, if Spain can keep their two Falconets alive, then they win the game. So, oh, but I tell you what, that's a nice amount of Hazard oh, rematch. This is up really nicely. Oh, but Julian, I told you. What did I say about that tower? You have to take that tower down for that exact reason. I was expecting the two fax pop from there, but instead it's the nine Waddleeras coming in to save the day. And uh, almost a debate from Kurtaboy, thinking there might be some glimmer of hope to get back into this game. But uh, don't be silly. This is Julian K we're talking about. Yeah, no, that was a really nice pop of the rods there. And the outpost coming in really in clutch there. And his tower is about to go down. The dogs are there now with the veteran musketeers. He's out teched him. He's out massed him. And now sending 1k wood in behind this. He is up 16 villagers, however. Now sending 600 coin. But his barracks is going to go down. Yeah, he needs he needs to send those hazards like into Julian's base. Oh, I think Julian saw that though. Did he? I think that was his line of sight. Yeah, yeah, he I did think, with um, a couple of rods. Yeah, I think at this point, maybe just try and run in his base and find a good herd and, and get a load of villagers. Or just try and get the villager pool here. They, they, this is one of the reasons why Brits are so good, because they, they still have the villager pool to fall back on. So, you know, in order for Julian to do a lot of damage here, he's, he's going to have to go for villagers. Uh, but if he dives into the TC, it's going to be risky. Gonna find a couple of vills here, though. Oh, is he? Okay, he he does see them, and they are so far away from the TC. That's gonna be really nice. And Brit might be getting close to age up here. Is he gonna get the snare with the rods? Oh, they're are they gonna escape? Oh, there's a couple on the trees. Are they gonna get the snare? I think the Huss have escaped. Double raxing now with Huss. In queue for Brit. <laughs> a little cheeky. Oh, two hustling look at those there. That's so That's such nice micro by Curtis Boy there. It really is. Oh, but it's not over yet. Oh, no way. He oh. can actually go through that. <laughs> wow. Julian must just think that they just vanished. What the hell? There's no <laughs> way. You, what? I, I am, I'm actually shook that, that there was a way forward here. a lot of Hussars. And, catch and he's going to catch the, uh... out the TC. Oh, he's going to kill the Explorer. Killing the Explorer was kind of important there. He kind of had to kill the Explorer there. Otherwise, that TC 100% would have got built. So uh, Julian needs to make the decision. Does he does he just pull villagers there? Or does he go for uh, bring back his Explorer? And that will obviously give his opponent 100 gold. So that one Falconet still being a nuisance right now. Like, Kurtaboy wants to get longbows or musks, and he's just going to get traded badly because of that one falconet. It re kill not killing that falconet when he had such an easy opportunity to do so is probably going to be Kurtaboy's undoing here. Scores are really close, though. So this game's not over yet. Like you said, Brits have got that 51 villager eco. Six, six longbows on the way. Potential double batch of 10 longbows coming in. If he can get this with a nice timing... Yeah, this game isn't over, and that Falcon is only on 20 HP. God, that hurts. God, that hurts.
Yeah, and it looks like he's gonna get the full batch here, and we're going with Rod and Musketeer, a little bit of everything from Spain. More Falconets, though, on the way. We do see two reinforcing Falcs at the north side. Oh, he's going to catch out some of these Lancers here, get a couple of volleys off. Julian nicely hiding the Falconets, though, out of the line of sight from Ketterboy. There's lots of choke points here, so Longbows have an opportunity to kind of uh, get, in that, get in a weird choke round here. It looks like a uh, Hazard going down there. I'm not sure how that happened, but uh, trying to get kind of try and get some raids in. But Rodelaires are going to be a pain in the backside. Just needs to kill that Falconet. But there is a lot of veteran Musketeers here. They're still... A decent amount of Lancers as well. They're going to be a nuisance. Longbow's getting stuck in. Oh, but two more Falconets. He's making Falconets. I like it. Oh, no. He Rodolero's. had an opportunity to pass through, but really nice body block here by the Musketeers and Rod Laros. GG. Oh, wait. Yeah, GG. Oh, <laughs> I keep changing my mind. <laughs> no, two facts still alive. GG. Yeah, just too much yeah. damage done, and the game has been called. GG. What are you saying, chat? Who was calling GG that early? I'm going to find I'm gonna find those comments. I'm going to find those comments, man. Counting Julian out like that. Uh, fair, fair to say that this was, uh, honestly, this was Kurt Boy's uh, game that to throw, really. He, uh, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't impressed with the micro, to be honest with you. I, I was watching the fight with the two Falconets, how it handled, how it turned out. And uh, he had such an opportunity to kill both Falconets, but he only ended up killing one. Wasn't focused on killing both of them. And yeah, that just cost him the game, honestly. Yeah, and there was actually a couple of opportunities where Julian's infantry was slightly out of position and the Husk could have position uh, moved in to potentially get that last, the third Falconet coming down. Um, but that last fight really just was all Julian in there with the veteran Musketeers and Rods. So we're going on to the next game here, everybody. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, let's end the prediction, and then we will tell you the next matchup and get those predictions as well. All right, everyone, we're headed over to the map New England. And yeah, it's going to be Julian's port versus Ketterboy's auto. Such a good map. Fantastic. All right, we have no map got... intro. Let's get you into the game, boys. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm gutted we don't have a map intro for New England. This has been my favorite map since the beginning of time. Since Vanilla introduced us to Age of Empires 3, this has been my favorite map. It really has. And I'm so glad it's in the tournament. It's, uh, if, if, if this map was released in DE, you would be calling it the most DE map going. But it was released on Vanilla. Why is it lame? Why is it so good? What is it about this map that is so good? Honestly, it's difficult to tell. The amount of games I have won and lost because of the one frigate pop on the lake. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. And both these guys are going to be aware of this. You've got great water. It, it, you know, it's got a decent amount of water. It's got that island in the middle of the water as well, which can just... I, I remember, right? I'll give, you, I'll give you a little history lesson here, guys. I remember winning a game, right, with Portugal on new england right uh it was like a really high level game and that little island i had two factories on there i had a tc on there i had docks surrounding and all that sort of stuff and in vanilla there was a card where portugal could have free monitors and for anyone who doesn't know monitors back in vanilla were unbelievably op they could cover like 70 percent of the map and they were like one hit heavy cannons it was absolutely hilarious and uh yeah so I, I hopefully we get to see memes on this map. It's got a great TP line as well, so that's 
that's generally a fan favorite is to go for the TP line. Uh, f uh, you know, Frigga, you can get monitors on these lakes in, in the middle of the map to take map control. It's just such a good map, man. It's just such a good map. So many memes, so many memories. Let's hope there's a, this, this adds to the memory bank. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's so many opportunities for different types of gameplay here on this map, and it's really just pick whatever you want to go for. We did see schooners and improved warships from Ottomans and otherwise a relatively standard deck. No two great bombards in H4, though. That is quite interesting. Um, must admit, that is uh, auto must, if you will. I mean, that's Kurt Boy Star, right? I mean, he's he's like a vanilla fanboy, and I, I'm guessing he's he's going to play this out in age two. He's going to go for the TP. He's going to go for four TPs very early on. He's going to go probably um, Jan Abbas, maybe ship like two galleys into the middle lake or something like that. But Portugal are so good on this map, especially with their like 10-10. Uh, I mean, Julian hasn't gone for TP, which I'm a little bit surprised about. He's going for a standard kind of 13 villager age up. <clears throat> but honestly, uh, I used to play this matchup, you know, back in the, again, back in the vanilla days when when this was around. And yeah, like Portugal can age up super fast. And the, the, the reason why Portugal is so good on this map, because those TCs, they're, they're free TCs. If you plant them down next to the lakes, you essentially can ship your boats on the lakes for free and your opponent can't because the TCs will just kind of gobble them up. So uh, port, uh, ports take map control on New England really, really well. Yeah, and there's a lot of like chokes on the middle section as well where those TCs can really solidify your map control and cover a lot of the trading post line itself. Ketterboy going for a trading post, so is Julian. We do see a forward Ottoman villa there next to the final trading post. And... Uh, is he going to use that to place down some infrastructure? We will see 700 wood coming in. And Ketterboy is standing at that third TP. Uh, looks like the two Vils there coming together. What do you think he's going to do with these, uh, the, the infrastructure? It's definitely going to be a barracks. And he has to be careful where he puts his barracks. Like, he, like every, <laughs> everything on this map. I, I know I keep talking about it, right? But the, the threat of the boats on lakes like just changes the dynamic of like everything in this game like where do you put your buildings you know how safe how far away because like that barracks is just so easy to be like can so easily be taken down and the tps with like the frigate on his side on julian's side uh sorry on Kurtaboy's side so yeah i mean he has to be really careful but we're gonna see janice he's gonna go straight for that tp he's gonna try and take that down um and uh yeah i mean a very safe tc going down there i would like it a little bit far further forward uh but maybe he's playing it safe because he, again imagine if kerboy shipped two galleys right on that lake you know as soon as as soon as he hit up he could have been taking that tc down right now which would be pretty yeah. hilarious but um again yeah you, you just have to be you the both of these guys will have the frigate and galleys in the in the lakes at the back of their mind at every single moment of this game it it will literally dictate the way that they that they kind of base build and 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 uh play this game so uh just looks like julian's going for a standard fast fortress here uh, can we see what he's aging up with because again prince. i'll tell you what the exile prince okay because again i'll tell you another really good age up a really good age up on this map is the 300 wood and the privateer um is it the Caravel or Privateer? I can't remember. It's one of them. But that's a really, really good yeah. age up again because, you know, if he's pushing him with Janissaries, you know, a Privateer or a Caravel is going to be really good defense um, against that rush. Yeah, it definitely is a nice option to plop that down next to your TC in your pond or, of course, in the opponent's pond. Stagecoach is coming in now for Ketterboy, and he's opted to go for Delis on top of the Janissaries. So he will be essentially picking up if he gets this fourth trading post, 16 vills, and that's going to be really nice. Yeah, so he's getting a stage coach. He's going to go for that, that that next TP. But look how slow it is. It's, it's, it, he's only clicked up. He's only getting the stage coach at kind of six and a half minutes. That feels quite slow to me. Uh, it really does feel quite slow to me. I mean, he, you should be getting stagecoach, I think, realistically, with your age up 400 wood. That's when you should be getting your stagecoach. Getting a stagecoach, like, well after your 700 wood has been shipped, 
I don't know. Maybe he was waiting to take down the TP before, because he did. So he didn't want to give Julian any extra kind of resources or right. XP. So maybe that's what he was thinking about. But honestly, I he was benefiting from free the entire time compared to Julian's one. So yeah, I, I just feel like this this stagecoach is coming super late here, and all Julian needs to do at some point is ship those free organs, make some halberdiers, and uh, he, he'll get clean. Kurt Boy will get absolutely cleaned here, but he's going to need triple this army. He's going to need triple the delis, triple the janissaries that he currently has. But you know, maybe that stagecoach uh, eco will kind of work out for him, and that's a great start. Taking down that stable is a great start. Yeah. Getting some idle time here from both town centers. We do see three TPs on coin right now. Five Dragoons are being shipped as the response. And uh, the stable will likely go up, but just getting a couple of pop shots on some villagers there. Yeah, nice placement there. That That's definitely going to go up. Um, I would have started sieging it and tried to get the Delhi to kill the villagers so he had a chance of taking that stable down, but I don't think there was any chance he had of taking that down. So just throwing away units here. Five goons incoming. Uh, I don't see the remast from Kurtaboy, so do uh, five goons going to come out and can clean up? What, what's the... Uh, he's just trying to do as much damage as he possibly can right now. Um, he's, he's, he's achieved a little bit, but not a lot. Uh, Barrett's going down. Can we have a look at Kurtaboy? Yeah, so... Um, yeah, so he's gonna go for the age up. I, 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 you know, I can respect that. I can respect that. Um, again, yeah, I mean, you know, like I was getting... saying earlier about. Um, sorry, to interrupt, uh, the, what I was saying earlier about. Um, ordinarily, I would love this build, right? So if he ages up fast here, that's what uh, is. What is he aging up with? The Admiral of the Ocean Sea. Okay, again, uh, do you see what I'm saying? That, that I told you that is a good. That is a really good age up here, as long as. Uh, he puts it, sticks it in the in the lake. The only problem is here, like I said, the reason why ports are so good on this map, he really, you can see where he's put um, his, his shipment point on the water. He really wants to apply pressure. He wants to get the frigate there. But again, like I said at the start, the reason why ports are so good, that TC is just sticking out like a sore thumb and it's just going to wreck any boat that goes there. And that's a little bit of a shame. Uh, but again, it's smart play by Julian. It's just better Civ uh, matchup, right? Uh, picking on this map, so. Yeah, no, definitely will be interesting. Now, the organs are being shipped. Um, if Ketterboy can time the Admiral of the Ocean to maybe get a shot off on those organs, that would be some insane value there. Oh, that would be uh, amazing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, these TPs are paying off. Now, yeah, I, I tell you what, I mean, look at the eco. He's able to produce full Jan Abus and get the veterancy upgrades when he is aged up because of the 300 wood that'll be coming in. So his eco is not bad at all with this stagecoach. He is also on 26 villagers. Uh, Port will, however, scale into this. And with the first shipment oh, for Julian being 1k no, wood. No, we might get it. No, it's actually <laughs> going to happen. If this actually happens, he could broadside attack that middle ship and do a ton of- Oh no! Oh, it's the wrong pond! I Why did he change out? ponds? No, it could have been right there! Hell, he could have been a fan favorite with that, but he bottled it! Curtain boy, you utter bottle job. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not happy. Chat is not gonna be happy about that. Oh, can I get a high RS in the chat? Damn! The, the one time the Admiral of the Ocean is for this map and you have a chance to delete some organ guns, but no, he decides not to. And now he's going for six Abus and Cav Archer, Vet Abus coming in as well. He did take down a lot of those goons with the frigate, so not the worst. Yeah, yeah, but, I mean, he um, lost Abus, right? He lost like five yeah, Abus, but I mean, he, he did. did kill quite a lot of goons. So yeah, that's that. It's, it's not a bad trade at all. It's just, we wanted the memes, right? And the memes might still be oh. coming because I see one frigate. Oh, but the frigate coming from the other side. Oh, this is nice play by Julian. Again, the organ guns are there. Uh, so he's gonna absolutely wreck everything on the water. And now just like that with the flip of a switch, the, the map control, the land map, the water, completely in favor for Julian. But and he is cleaning up shop. Big but we do see that Ketterboy is shipping a frigate to the same pond where the other frigate is. So maybe that could come in, get some shots off. So it's going to be very tight here. And there's the frigate. Uh, <laughs> Where's the Abbas? He needs, he needs support of his other units. 
Oh, no, I don't think this is going to go well for Kurt. Boy, the organ guns are just going to absolutely destroy here. Uh, yeah, Julian, all Julian needs to do is just run his uh, his boat away. And uh, the organ guns will do the rest, I think. But Oh, no, but his frigate does go. I think it's going to be frigate for frigate. Oh, is he going to survive? Run, frigate, oh. for your life. He's going to survive. <laughs> just made it out. Oh. And that's a good amount of Abyss there. And they're going to be able to split fire the hell out of those Casadors. Did you see that micro from Keter Boy? That was beautiful, Two Micro. Falcon that was beautiful, coming Micro. coming in. Oh, boy. And now, those three organ guns don't look quite as scary as they did because Abyss guns and Cav Archers both do very well versus those organ guns. So, yeah, Kurtzer boy. Uh, I mean, Julian's done a good job. He's taken down, what, three TPs? That's going to that's gonna take a lot of getting back. That's, you know, that 600 wood. He's going to have to clamber back. Uh, but he need, he needs to to be able to stay in this game. Otherwise, Julian is going to outscale because he's on 52 villagers already. After getting three organ guns, all of those goons, he's still he's up to 55 villagers. Yeah, this sieve is a fair sieve, everyone. Yeah, no, he's scaling so hard right now. It's insane. Picking up some vills on the periphery. Uh, I did notice Ketter Boy sent 1k wood, so definitely going to be trying to get some of those trading posts back. The Explorer is building more. We do see a Culver in NQ for Julian now, so his that's the thing with some of these high-level guys, as you know. Their timing is just so... They just know that and same thing with auto i mean he did see the three culverins so that's a bit more logical of course but um julian definitely sensing that the two falcs are going to come and cause some trouble so yeah getting the second trading post back up jeanette dragoons being shipped you saw some really nice micro there like where in julian's base he's got those free organ guns and and look at that kind of tree line you know native the lake all of that choke point and you could see he was just trying to set up a really good kind of trap position against uh Kurtz boy and Kurtz boy almost took the bait but not quite he was getting a little bit too thirsty with his organ guns and uh yeah but he didn't take the bait it was really stuff blind culverins here uh maybe uh, are they blind or does he want it just against the frigate ah uh, that's uh that's interesting i'm not sure he needs that but um yeah maybe we'll see i mean that frigate is uh, you you can put 200 um you can put a dock down that's that's quite a popular thing to do you know put a dock down and that because that that ship is worth a thousand resources right so to just put down another 200 wood to keep it alive for a little bit longer uh is definitely worth it Okay, organ guns pushing forward. Oh, but we've got culverins on both sides. Interesting. Okay, cold v. Cold War going on now. Uh, can the culverins reach the organs? Oh, they're close. Maybe just do a bounce shot. Just fire. Oh, he could have got a good bounce shot, I guess. But we're going to see culverin v. Culverins. And, and, of course, Julian gets the first shot off. Colvin v. Colvin again. The Abbas guns need to push onto the organ guns. And they had an opportunity, but he just didn't quite get there and oh god this already is starting to feel like a massive uphill battle for Kerboy. Kerboy's staying in the game really really well like there's only like 2k score in it but um julian just microing like a beast here and uh okay a, a little bit some heavy calf coming in and maybe that's just gonna be enough to kind of produce that meat shield he wants to and allow the abbas guns to get in close enough to do to kill those organ guns which he does do and now this is looking to look a really good fight. Look at the spread of the Abbas guns. They've got that perfect form and shape. And so they're, every, they're not overkilling. They're doing as much maximum damage possible. And look at all of those dead bodies. It's beautiful to see. But even after taking a really good fight, <laughs> Julian Portugal <laughs> is still up 2K. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and those Abbas are definitely going to be applying more pressure to these villagers here on the left-hand side where a lot of the food is for Julian. More goons coming out with reinforcing Huss organ guns and Minutemen being called. Explorer trying to snare here. Huss coming in from the back. And his yeah, ego is just nice popping yeah. off. Really nice chokes here. 71. Oh my goodness. And he's had the same mass. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, Kurt, honestly, Kurtiboy's micro has been really good this game. I can't fault him at all, really. Um, I think he's just been out Civ micro here, honestly. Like, this has been impressive stuff by Kurtiboy. Unlike last game, I, I've liked his micro this game. Um, but, yeah, I just don't think it's going to be enough now. Yeah, and he gets cleaned here with the Minutemen pop. He does get the TPs back, but Julian is making more organs and has retained his mass, of course. And now Vet Hus with Constables are going to be able to run around and start raiding on top of this. So he has his four-piece comp together, and two Falks with some Abyss there are not really going to be able to do too much against this. Yeah, I mean, Portugal is potentially out of food very, very soon. Uh, is I can I literally only see one herd left, which might be at about a half herd. But when you are eight, 80 villagers at 17 minutes after putting up the fight, he's just put up. Oh God, I, I, I'll get I'll get on my uh, on my bandwagon about this civilization if I keep going. But my goodness me, 80 freaking villagers! That that T button hotkey has been absolutely smashed. As hard as Harrison's mum has this game, because my goodness me, 80... He's on more than double villagers. Oh, my goodness me. This game is uh, looking pretty over right now. And Kurtiboy has not made a single mistake, really. Like, what mistake has Kurtiboy made here? Like, he hasn't made a single mistake. And uh, he's getting punished pretty hard for it. Yeah, I can't really say there's been any defining moment where you can point out that Ketterboy through or made a definitive error uh, um i mean oh here comes spahi i don't know if that uh, there's not many goons there though yeah yeah maybe they can be the great equalizer what he needs to do is he needs to get a, what i would be looking at right here is putting my spahi inside the frigate and uh like, trying to like get a really good pop with the spahi onto onto the land to kind of catch him off guard and and then get a good broadside attack as well but, uh, I mean, Christmas is uh, not just around the corner yet. So, um, you know, th but that's, that's what I would be thinking right now. You know, hopefully Kurt's boy's thinking the same. Maybe thinking of taking a really good fight. How he can trap his opponent. And that's what is really important. He needs to try and figure out how he can trap him. Ports at 18 minutes, 17 minutes are already on Mills. And it's not a problem at all. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's insane how well they've scaled here. So, a lot of artillery, a lot of cavalry, infantry here now, villagers moving up the map. He has reclaimed the farthest north trading post for himself, and he's transitioning his economy into the late game quite nicely, very early in the match. And, yeah, it's... He's going to be 99 uh, bills before 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, it's like an AOM game. What the hell? <laughs> oh god, wow. that's like that's like nine thousand food, and like it hasn't impacted Julian's like ability to press on the map at all. Um, yeah, it's impressive. Yeah, yeah. Eight K score deficit. There are no words pushing. I, I I did say Portugal are good on this map. You know, you can't deny that Portugal are good on this map. Those those extra TCs just, you know, provide so much pressure and map control against the lakes. Essentially, uh, you know, ports are the anti-New England sieve is the best way of looking at it. And they can also be super aggressive with it as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a real, and, and, you know, it's clear, it's, it's smart of Julian to identify that. Cause I don't think Julian was like a vanilla player. So, um, that's, that's kind of cool. Big fight going on now. Spahi diving in. Uh, is it going to be enough? The Abbas guns have to go on the organ guns. You have to kill those organ guns. Otherwise they will melt your army. And is it going to be enough? Spahi still alive. Oh, I don't know. Once again. You know, we got that nice kind of crescent moon, I think Talana said in chat, that, and, it's, and it's such a nice way of saying it, that like crescent moon shape, which is perfect because that's how you maximize damage. And look at that. He takes an almost even fight, but he just can't keep up with 99 villager eco. 99 villager eco at 20 minutes. Yeah, it's um, really not much else to say there. I really do think that Ketterboy had a chance to pop that one galley 
with a broadside onto the organs when they were shooting the trading post. And that could have potentially given him some tempo to go forward after that. But even then, that's uh, asking for a lot. And again, as you mentioned, the trades are very even throughout the entire game. But look at that. I mean, resources gathered despite having four TP stagecoach over your opponent is insane. Yeah, Otto played this well, and, you know, it's just unfortunate he played against a Civ, which can outscale 4TP, um, boom, apply pressure in the middle of the map with three organ guns, which is a broken card. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think just, uh, pff, the, uh, no, there's no words, no words. Yeah. I have said for a long time that uh, Ports is definitely a, a plus 200, 300 ELO Civ, and I think... Um, I've been proven right recently with uh, Swisher Guts and Chef's Adiz both dropping literally 300 ELO when they stopped playing Portugal. So, yeah, I've, uh, I'm, I'm quite smug about that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy. Oh, passy, passy, passy. I'm hovering over that ban button, let me tell you. <laughs> It wouldn't be a good stream, really, if Passy wasn't salty about something. Uh, like, oh, yeah, good old. It's just kind of how Passy. you have to have it. All right, we're going to send you guys over to the next map introduction video. In a few moments, the matchup is Russia versus Japan. Julian's playing Russia, Getter Boy's playing Japan. All right, everybody, let's get you into the game here. Welcome back to game number three of this ESOC tournament for the Autumn Championships. We've got in the north, Julian K in the color teal as the Russians, his opponents in the south side of the map in the color blue. We have Ketterboy as Japan. All right, Lion, walk me through your thoughts on this matchup. Um, yeah, what I'm doing before I do that is I, I'm just uh, sending a really, really important uh, picture uh, in the chat, which I advise everyone to look at uh, <laughs> just so they can point and laugh. And uh, anyways, <laughs> sorry. Oh, I need to compose myself. <laughs> uh, well, OK, so we've got Julian K as Russia playing Kurta Boy. Uh, Japan. So Russia is the counter pick in this matchup. So I'm guessing, I don't know if Josh or anyone uh, can confirm. Uh, I think this would have been Kurtaboy first pick. Um, that was the yes, that is correct. Yeah. So Kurtaboy picked first hit, and uh, I mean Russia are a good civ on a non TP map anyway. Um, but uh, to, to I, I think what would have sealed the deal for him is the fact that Kurtaboy picked Japan. Um, and yeah, this has always kind of been um, Russia favored, kind of. Uh, Japan, it, it's obviously very winnable for, for Japan. One thing to note about this map as well, which can help Japan, is you've got like about six or eight uh, like llamas uh, posted around the map. They tend to be, at, they tend to hang around the lakes in this map. So generally you get four on each lake, two at the bottom of the lake and two at the top of the lake. And uh, what you want to do is, especially as Japan, because you have two explorers, you have that advantage over Russia. So you want to dive into the middle of the map, run as fast as the little legs can take them, try and get those llamas in the middle of the map, because those llamas can be, like, really important, particularly for um, if you go to Shogu Shrine, for example. So you can put the llamas on the Shogu Shrine, and that makes a massive difference on the eco. Uh, even if you don't go to Shogu Shrine, obviously you can still use them for normal shrines. So that's what his thought process should have been at the beginning of this game. And it'll be interesting to see what the llama score is on either side of this map. From Julian's perspective, I think it's just going to be standard Russia, to be honest, quite honest with you. What he's going to, the, the hardest thing for Russia is to scout whether or not he sees a starting stable or he sees a starting barracks. And that will obviously decide whether or not he goes strelet heavy or whether or not he goes musketeer heavy. So, yeah, this is a, that's, that's kind of the starting process of this game. Is it looks like there's two llamas for Russia. So the rest, it looks like uh, the advantage, uh, sorry, free for Russia. So the advantage probably went 
to uh, Japan. If not, it's quite even. Oh, is that only two, Josh? No, no. Oh, if think... you look at uh, his base, he had six uh, for Russia. So Russia has an insane advantage oh, here. Oh, right. I didn't see. I, I can't see. I can't see. Okay, so uh, so Russia won that match. So that's, that is honestly, like, uh, you can't allow that to happen, right? Like, if you have two explorers, you have to get those llamas ASAP. Like, and you have to win that trade. Like, you cannot Absolutely. allow Russia to do this. Um, uh, but we're seeing, it gives we're seeing Russia so much tempo. One hundred percent. So, um, but yeah. So, so you know, now it's now it's coming down to age two. I think we're going to see a forward barracks from Russia, and we're going to see standard stuff here. Two bills coming forward onto the hunts next to the lake. Are we going to see another treasure snipe again? Oh, oh, that's close. Oh, Ketterboy just gets it this time. He did lose a 70 wood treasure earlier. Um, so we already see that those llamas have helped Julian. He's queued his villagers and he will be able to likely get out a batch of strelets with the quartermaster age up if he's macroed. The samurai is now out and it's going to come forward to this blockhouse this could be a game winning moment the blockhouse does go up and here comes the samurai yeah oh, he should be sieging yeah i don't know it's, it's debatable because that's gonna go down and he's just lost a samurai for free and i i oh i don't know if it's nerves or something but like that's such a valuable asset it's a shame that it wasn't there a little bit earlier. I mean, I am I I know I'm gonna get trolled for for this in chat, but I am a massive fan of 300 food as his first shipment. Just just so he can age up super quickly. And it's a really good counter Russia build because if you ship 300 food first shipment, you and, and age up with Tory Gates, you get that samurai out. That samurai is like the old school vanilla uh, Minutemen that would come out and kill any forward base villagers. And uh, it, it's such a good anti Russia tech. But you know, it, it's it, I, I am a troll, I know, but you know, Kurt Boy obviously is much more standard player. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a shame that they weren't 15 that that samurai wasn't 10 to 15 seconds uh, quicker because if it was, it could have that it could already have been a very different game no i totally actually agree that 300 food should be the prioritization in this matchup because that samurai let's not forget it it does like 60 siege damage so when you multiply that by four when the blockhouse is being built that can be a total of 240 with the two explorers on top of that so really really could have denied the blockhouse is getting these strelets into the base and the ashis are going to have to just run away getting more idle time on top of this the daimyo is being shipped and the daimyo will kill all of these strelets let's not make a mistake about it uh <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is this is a good opportunity for me to uh, learn uh, here, Honga. So, Honga, how do you pronounce that? Because uh, I know you're Asian, so you must know mm. better than me uh, with it's your Asian daimyo. background. Daimyo. 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 Yes, exactly. Because Harrison, exactly. Harrison, Harrison always tells me off like like he's my teacher. So I say mm -hmm. daimyo. Mm -hmm. It's daimyo. Yeah, just... Yes, yes. No, okay, well, so I, like, I, yo, I'm yo, not yo, sure you end. should be asking... Yo. Exactly. But I'm not sure you should be taking okay. instruction about Japanese pronunciations from a fat British man. That's typically like the opposite I, I of totally what you should agree. do. So I totally I think agree. We can just, I would take uh, it from an Asian man. Even if you're not Japanese, yes. you're closer yes. than I. So you're all the same. So exactly. that's what was, what was it. <laughs> When when Tad when Tad came out, I was like, oh, so they just released one DLC. Okay, good to know. <laughs> We got some more Hashis coming out here uh, to reinforce. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, uh, we, yeah. Uh, well, I'm trying to compose myself, Honga, for goodness sake. <laughs> I'm about to get banned on ESOC, but it's cool. I got my, I got my, I got my, I got my say in. It's all right, everybody. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, um, you know, Kerboy's bought himself some time here, which is good. He's got his dime yo out. So uh, he's going to essentially use that as his stable, which is great. Um, but, yeah, you know, Russia are just setting up shot, man. Like, Russia are looking really strong here. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're, they're just setting up shot. I, as Japan, I think, you know, maybe a couple of nice little intricate walls would be great here with maybe the odd gate here and there. Um, I think he just, 
he needs something just to make it a bit more difficult for Russia, because otherwise they're just going to dive in here. The Strelets is just going to swarm Japan's units, and uh, I'm not sure he's going to have enough stuff to deal with it. Yeah, the other thing that would be nice with some intricate walling would be Yumi's would outrange all of the infantry that Russia could pose and basically clean. But these Cossacks are coming in. A couple of Nagis time with Minutemen here, but there's just too many Cossacks to be able to fight off the... Um, yeah, I mean, I just don't see this going well for Ketter Boy here. More Ruskets coming in and uh, the Strelitz just attack moving these Ashis. Um, Good fight for Julian. He's up 3k score at this point, and he's got the snare on with the Cossacks. More Ashis are popping out, but the Nagis really aren't going to be able to do too much against this three-piece comp from Julian. Yeah, this is this is this is difficult. It's just it's it's quite painful. Uh, I, those Musketeers were a really nice addition here because the Ashi weren't able to just kind of get stuck in and melee. And uh, that's those musketeers providing that really nice anti cap. So again, Julian's just played this perfectly. Honestly, like I, I there's, there's the GG. Like honestly, there's there's nothing more to say other than Julian just played it perfectly. Now, yeah. going back to what you're saying about 300 food, hopefully people actually recognise that that is a legitimate build, and it's and I think that is far more meta, especially in this matchup, right? Particularly in this matchup, the 300 food is far more meta than whatever he shipped. Did he ship two villages? Was it two villages, maybe? It was two oh, villages. Okay. Like, yeah. what, what's two villages? You know, two villages is already a pretty bad card, right? When you consider right. 300 resources is is the kind of the, the max or the limit in uh, age one. Already, he's at a disadvantage by shipping two villages. So why not just ship 300 food and, and, and yeah. buy yourself so much time and let your shrines do the booming for you so yeah i think I, I, I honestly it's a legitimate build it's it's you know we've seen like one of the best japanese players do it which is uh piro piro and uh he's had a lot of success doing it so honestly yeah if you, any of you japan players out there struggling against the russian matchup i would strongly consider you try 300 food first shipment now i will say though i think it's kind of curious because i i 100% agree that 300 food is should be the standard opening for Japan, but with no trading post on the map, getting the five shrines out or Ashis as soon as you hit H2 will be a bit slower. Um, so I think just considering the map, saving Japan for a different map would have been a better decision, I think, because um, the trading post is very essential for that build. So we've got game number four here, and it's going to be a France mirror. Um, love i actually really like mirrors i know most people think that they're boring um i think it is generally interesting because it just shows the decision making and micro differences between players and really just shows you who's got the better uh mechanics yeah french mirrors are all right french mirrors they're not they're not the worst mirror they're not the best mirror but uh, there's yeah. lots of different openings for france so uh, yeah, let's get into the game and see. All right, Lion, take us away. All right. Uh, what map is this called again? Malaysia. Malaysia. I'm such a good caster. Uh, we're on Malaysia. It's game number four. Julian is currently 3-0. Is it a best of nine as well? Are these best of nines now? Best of sevens. Okay, so this is match point. So this is match point for Julian, and uh, yeah, we're, we're, we've got a French mirror. So like I was just saying, you know, th there's lots of different openings with France, especially in the DE era, which is great. You know, we've got, uh, uh, oh, already, already. That's really that, painful. Oh, That's huge. Oh, that is really painful. So potential, uh, really, really good start here from Kurtaboy. Kurtaboy's in red, for anyone who can't see that. He's in the left of the map. And yeah, in... The, on this map, that is honestly that is a, if Julian actually wants to get a TP here, that is such a massive mistake by him. Like the 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 rule on this map to go and get the TP is you have to go either up or down depending on where you start on the map. Going to your opponent's TP is a lot longer trek. So on this map, you want to move vertically rather than horizontally, um, mm. and it does look like Julian wants that TP. So he is gonna miss a full set of XP. So you watch, look. Uh, Kurtaboy already has 
his shipment. It's already being shipped. Look, it's a quarter yeah. of the way done already. So he is going to have three CDBs, which is almost a four villager shipment, by the way. He is going to have that out. Like, what, what are we talking about? 40, 50 seconds sooner? That's than, a huge than his difference. Opponent? Especially in a mirror match. Like, that, that is yeah. unbelievable. That is an unbelievable advantage. So, maybe this series just got a little bit interesting. We'll see if Kurtaboy can capitalize on that kind of benefit that he's got this early into the game. I mean, he does have a lot more water buffaloes because he had to traverse the map, which will help him later on. But we just now see the three CDBs coming in. So, yeah, I mean, Insane. it's that's a humongous difference. And it could really be the difference between getting your next four CDBs in. So that's just going to stack throughout the game and his economy will be better as a result of it. So I'm, I'm interested that uh, Julian is going for 12-10. He managed to age up at 2 minutes 27 or so, which isn't terrible for 12-10, but it's not particularly great either. Um, but he, he is down a lot of XP. That is the problem with doing this 12-10. If we go and have a look at Kurtaboy, and like I said, there's a lot of different openings in this matchup. We see Kurtaboy also going for 12-10. So I've said for the longest of time, like the 12-10, especially if you get a food treasure is definitely france's best opening it you you just you age up so quick you get three uh, cdbs straight into four cdbs really really quickly uh, which you can't understate how like good free cdbs and four cdbs they're like some of the best shipments in the game just because cdbs by nature are better than normal villagers and uh yeah it's 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 a fantastic fantastic start for both sides but Kurtaboy obviously has the advantage at the moment with the shipment curve. So we'll, uh, And Eco, don't forget. He had his free CDBs a lot sooner. So it's not just Absolutely. the shipment curve he's ahead of. He has an, an economic lead at the moment. Both players just getting some market text now. And it's going to be interesting to see whether the... Each player goes for either a barracks start or a stable start. Four CDBs now coming in for Ketterboy along with Placer Mines. He's picking up his Quartermaster Age Up Wood. And Julian similarly sending his four CDBs and picking up the Quartermaster Wood. A little bit of hurting here, a little bit of hurting there. Get those animals in and we see a stable. I really don't... Uh, mm. I mean, that placement's a little... I guess that's fine. Yeah. It's just sometimes, like, if your Vils have to walk around the mine, and, uh, no, that's they can actually path through, so that's not the biggest problem. Um, the one thing with the 1210 is getting Steel Traps is a bit more difficult, and we do see now that Steel Traps is coming in for Julian, but not for Ketterboy. Uh, the racks, so one player opting for a stable, one player opting for a racks, one player opting for 700 wood, the other opting for the 700 coin. Oh no, actually it's gonna be a Hussar three Huss shipment here. Interesting. Interesting, I like that. So uh, yeah, very much uh, the kick-ass, uh, that is the kick-ass shipment right there. RIP to, uh, to Kick-Ass who uh, was a legendary player in the community who sadly passed away the other day. Um, see, Look Tom was doing a uh, kind of a, a stream in his honor, and uh, yeah, that that free Hus shipment was definitely like a, a big shipment uh, that he used to love sending first. So that just kind of reminded me of him. So uh, yeah, R.I.P. to him. And I, I like Kurtaboy's being aggressive in this matchup. So he's going for the cavalry in this matchup, which is smart. Whilst I think it's, it's smart, Julian is is going for Musketeers because he knew he would be behind because of the TP shipment. So I think he's just playing it safe by going for like the Musketeers, which is obviously the more defensive style um, uh, over the over the aggressive style of the Hazards. So I think that's smart play by both sides to kind of acknowledge that and, and one go for the aggression, one go for the uh, defense. Yeah, absolutely. And the Musketeers may have to sit in base to protect the CDBs. And not only that, for from Kettery Boy's perspective, Great Coats and Blunderbuss will kind of neutralize a lot of the Musketeer play. The Huss will be able to roam around the map, and he's going to put some of them to work here to siege down this trading post. And that would also put him into the lead in that regard for his shipments heading into age three. 700 coin being shipped here uh, for Ketterboy. Now, 
I do have to say though, going up to Fortress without the 700 wood always feels very awkward, just trying to get the racks down later. Meanwhile, Julian is aging up with the Exiled Prince. The CDBs and Musketeers are trying to defend against these Huss raids here. And yeah, uh, looks like he's going to be trying to chop for a stable or other infrastructure, maybe veterancy. We'll see. Yeah, uh, I like what uh, Kurt Boy's doing here. He's going to seize that TP down, which is nice. And that makes it difficult for Julian to, you know, d does he does he decide to go for that and defend that TP or does he decide to kind of stay at home? Because obviously he's going to have to split his army one way or the other and then he risks losing his musketeers and then he's in a really bad position. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a it, that's a nice kind of uh, checkmate move there by Kurtaboy because whatever Julian decides to do is kind of going to be a win for Kurtaboy. And, and again, that's why it's... You know, being the aggressive, be having the Hazars gives you the advantage here over the Musketeers. And uh, when they both get into age three, you know, they're both going to have these age two legacy units. One's Hazars, one's Musketeers. And uh, again, Hazars are more flexible and you can do more with them. And uh, and yeah, and you can go raiding with them. And they're, they're more useful in the late game as well over the Musketeers. So um, still useful here, even if he hasn't achieved too much. He's taken a TP down. But I don't like this. He sees that Julian is in age three early and he must know there's potential Cav on the way. And uh, oh, this is going to be, those five goons are going to be chasing mm. and uh, they are going to be sprinting. They're going to be running a marathon here. But Julian doesn't see where they come from. So Julian kind of went, went north with them and uh, he might be able to slip away there. Oh, the, the no, the don't go for that. Get the snare. Oh, oh, no. Mistake. He knows he's trying to trap uh, like that again, like Kurt Boy to have like such poor uh, awareness there. Like that, that showed me that Julian was clearly trying to set up a trap and uh, that just gave it away to me that like I would have stayed well clear of that uh, explorer. But Kurtaboy took the bait there and that that was like a 2k elo mistake. Like Kurtaboy should be better than that. And losing so many hazards, so many expensive hazards here is uh, oh, these. It, uh, it's just like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> you know, this yeah. is your thing, you know, this is your thing, right? And and you, uh, you're losing all of your hazards, like, ah, yeah, that's 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 not great. But again, we are in a tournament. There are nerves. But then again, look, the Fligger to wrist, the Switcheroonie, but almost three or four, however many goons went down there. And uh, yeah, so again, that's, uh, you know, might have clawed a little bit back there by Kurtaboy. Yeah, uh, definitely took the bait there on that one and julian was fortunate enough where his explorer was in position to get a slight snare for the dragoons and musketeers to catch up more skirmishers in production he's not going to be able to get out uh, more than two dragoons from his stable so yeah let's uh see in the mirror match at this point in the game we're just approaching the 10 minute mark scores are very close however after that kind of push Julian is up just slightly. Looks like both players are going to be opting for some classic French skirm goon. Lion could never put him be him. No, no. To me, this is uh, this is just uh, yeah, it's just a bit boring to me. And uh, skirm gooners looking down on us musk falcons. That's all I can say. They think they're better than us. Which they're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look at the Julian. Look at Julian still using those musketeers. So you can you can see there like how all of those hazards died for Kurtaboy. And if, if he didn't lose any of those hazards, those hazards, like whilst this fight is going on, could be used, you know, um, either to apply pressure to skirmishes here, to the to the skirmishes here, or they could be raiding uh, Julian's base right now. So because he's lost all of those units, it's just it's it's an uphill battle from here. But, oh, maybe a curse coming in for a nice uh, switcheroonie there from the flank. But again, Kurtboy is going to lose one before he even gets a chance. He's going to lose two before he even gets a chance to play around with them. And uh, look at Julian just sticking his hero in there, being super annoying. Really nice micro there by Julian. L just using his hero here. I haven't seen Kurtboy's uh, Explorer used at all. All I can see Kurtboy is his Explorer is just sat at the bottom of the uh, of the map doing absolutely nothing with full HP. 
620 HP potentially could be soaked up in any one of these skirmishes. And he's just sitting back and not using it. Whilst on the other hand, Julian's using his to full effect. We saw early with the trap. We just saw it there be super annoying, mess up his kind of timing, his, his positioning, and uh, using it to scout. It's got good line of sight. So again, Julian is just, you know, he, I think it's fair to say he's just on another level. You know, he's, he, he yeah. is just that extra level above. You know, Kurtiboy is a fantastic player, no doubt. We saw him how he absolutely pulled Shake's trousers down and gave him a good spanking in front of the entire year at school. And, and Julian is still just that extra step above, so... Yeah, I mean, just using every single thing available to him, to his advantage. The two Falconets are out, and he's got that critical mass of skirmishers. He has enough Dragoons to fight against any potential Cav switches. And the micro there from positioning Lee Ketterboy was just kind of poor. The reinforcing units that were there to take down the Musketeers and reinforce the curves we're just not in a good position and julian took advantage of that in just a couple of seconds like that and you lose you know 700 hp worth of curves in just one second and he doesn't have his falconets out right now more skirms are coming in but the tree line here will be a nice position for ketter boy to take this fight but the falconets are unpacking Oh, man, that's a huge volley into the center of those skirmishers. It's oh. another one with a bounce onto the curse. Julian yeah. going into the eight curse switch now. Ah, oh, man, I just don't really know. I may be some CDB bulls here with Ketterboy. I don't know how he hasn't gotten his two Falconets out. Did he ship seven skirms instead? Like, surely at this point in the game with the trading post up, he would have been able to get... Oh, here we go. Here comes the boys. The boys are moving forward. The CDBs, the Minutemen, it's all moving forward. Julian has unpacked his Falconets, but the chase is on. And CDBs have bonuses at range versus artillery. So they will do a good, fantastic job of killing those Falconets. But Julian's doing a nice job. He's waiting for his curse to come in. And is that going to seal the deal? Oh, I don't know. The CDBs are tanking a lot of damage, but the goons, and, or excuse me, the curs are also moving forward here onto the CDBs. And Julian calling Miniman of his own. This is the big battle. Here we go. CDBs are his face. Trying to, they're definitely trying to connect with the Falconers and they can't. Oh, God. The body blocking and the snaring was real. Kurtiboy, I think, knows that this was his moment to make something happen. He needed to win this fight really convincingly using his villagers as bait. And that was the only way he was going to get back into this game with a good fight. Unfortunately, Julian K did not take the bait and he microed really well. He kept his Falconets alive and he ran towards his base, got his own Minutemen and uh, waited for his reinforcements. And uh, yeah, that was just really, really well played by Julian. Just cool, cool as a cucumber. Now sending cavalry combat with more reinforcing curves. I really don't know how Hatterboy is going to be able to take this. Up 13 CDBs as well. So that villager goal there was a real investment for him to do. He does have line of sight now in a nice position behind this tree line. But this Falconets fire a little too early, not getting much damage. They shoot the curves and now... Ketterboy has revealed that he himself also has Falconets. Who's going to get the first shot? Trade evenly here. But the Dragoons yeah. from Julian doing a nice job taking down the other Falconet, and he still has his. The Kurs are moving forward and doing a ton of damage, and Ketterboy calls GG. Well, well, well. Julian, just with an absolutely dominating um, series there. Uh, I mean, there's just, yeah, I mean, the, the, it's the reason class. why. Yeah, that's the reason why we call him the GOAT. I mean, he calls himself the GOAT. You know, so he's got that level of confidence to call himself the GOAT. Um, that says it all, really. Um, all I can, all I can, um, I can feel Kaiser Klein in, fr in France right now, just sh absolutely shivering, just absolutely wetting his pants at that there's going to be a Kaiser Klein versus Julian final and he's just he's just absolutely shitting himself about the performance of Julian K here. <laughs> Maybe he'll take the bait. 
Maybe he'll nibble in chat. Okay, um, so you're streaming, you're casting with uh, Mr. V now, Hongo, yeah? We keep, uh, keep losing Hongo every now and then. He keeps uh, dropping, I think, doesn't he? Um, yeah. yeah. All right, uh, Mr. V, are you in chat? Mr. V will be casting with uh, Big Hongo uh, for the next series, so you guys don't go anywhere. Hey, yeah, so uh, internet issues here. My roommate is streaming some high quality scat right now. Um, yeah, some ridiculously violent uh, porn, but you know, it happens. <laughs> uh. All right, well, uh, in that case, I'll uh, leave you guys to it. Um, oh, yeah, gonna really enjoy listening to both of you guys. What's up, Mr. V? How you doing? And um, yeah, I'll leave you to uh, who is it? Who is it? It's Kaiser Klein versus who? Oh, that's it, Soldier. Oh, that 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 could be a banger. But um, hopefully, Soldier um, gets a couple of games over. So, thanks, guys, and I'll catch you later. Peace. Cheers, Lion. See you. Mong, how's it All going, right. man? Doing well. How about yourself, Mr. V? I cannot complain. I'm just finding the link to the uh, the webcam so I can get logged in. There it is. I am on the right one, right? Correct. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, Lion, for coming in and casting that series with me. Always a pleasure to co-cast with you. We've got another banging series coming up, and I'm joined here with Mr. V. We've got Josh on production. Shout out, Josh. He's been doing a great job. We've got Soldier versus Kaiser Klein. And uh, to be honest, the first few players that I really discovered at the pro level were Soldier and Kaiser Klein. So I'm very excited to watch them match up against each other here. They both have what I would say would be um, really, really good, proper micro mechanics in their to their own right and that's kind of the thing that allows them to perform at such a high level so yeah i'm really excited for this one uh what are your thoughts mr v so for those of you that aren't uh age of empires 3 historians this uh this matchup kind of goes a ways back right you have two players that were both famous not only on de but also on legacy in fact you could argue that kaiser klein's heyday was back on the ESOC patch and Soldier as well, a well-known player there in the old Interjection Saturday SmackDown days. So, I mean, there's just a lot of experience shared between the both of these guys. Of course, Kaiser Klein, the former number one, going up against uh, one of the better players in the community and one of the uh, more notable YouTubers nowadays. You know, Soldier putting out a lot of casted games. We know that he is, uh, he's not rusty. He's been practicing a ton. So I think it's going to be a good series overall. Yeah, definitely. And speaking of Rust, I know that Kaiser is probably not at his peak that he would like to be for a tournament like this, but he is suited for tournaments. Nobody mm -hmm. really is better in tournaments than him. And mm -hmm. it, in this format as well for the legacy civilizations, he's going to be just happy here. Uh, we just mm -hmm. had a follow I saw in the chat. Thank you very much for that. Uh, just for these people in chat who have not seen, it is September, so you get 30% off on your subscriptions. All of Ooh. your subs will help go to support these types of events in the future. And we really appreciate all of your guys' support. And um, it, if we are ready, uh, Josh, do we have the first game or? Ooh. All right, so interesting. We've got the first matchup, ladies and gentlemen, and Kaiser Klein has gone into game number one on Himalayas, opting to play as Russia. Soldier is going to go up as China. So uh, very interesting matchup, this one. And I've played this from both sides. And um, 
really going to be interesting to see if China is able to safely age up to the fortress age without Russia applying too much pressure in transition. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but uh, we've already done the map intro videos in the first series, so we won't waste any time. We will get you guys over to the game as soon as it launches. Uh, Mr. V, what are your thoughts on this matchup here? So this matchup used to be a lot more simple, right? Back when China was uh, strictly an FF Civ, when they only really had one game plan, it was basically, can Russia do enough damage or even keep China in H2 long enough to let that economy and those military trades pay off? But nowadays, you know, China's a lot more versatile than they used to be. And so while as the Chinese player, you probably don't want to stick around forever in H2 against Russia, that is their bread and butter you know, you can afford to stick around a, a little bit longer. And of course, China's build order has gotten a lot more diverse. It's not just Northern refugees into 700 gold into a straight FF. So I don't know what Soldier's gonna be pulling out here. I haven't seen a lot of his China, but he definitely has more options than he would have, you know, say before DE. Absolutely. And Soldier plays a great China. Um, I've seen many of his China games, but Kaiser Klein, has the scariest Russia in the world. And <laughs> when he's cooking, it can, it, it really can just end in under 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be a very tight match, this one. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, cause I've been seeing it out of more and more Russia players. If he goes for anything, you know, a bit more flavorful, like say a Surabov build, you know, tries to go for some sort of veteran Musk timing. Cause we know that China is vulnerable to you know, the one unit spams, right? Because of their military system, they can't get out a lot of one unit very quickly. So if you just spam them with either, you know, heavy cav, heavy infantry, light infantry, they can really struggle to deal with it. But, you know, seeing as it's Kaiser Klein, I, I think we might be more, you know, uh, we might be more accustomed to seeing him play a lot more standard Russia. So, you know, we could just be seeing him coast on mechanics and his skill alone here. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Those are all great points. I think the banner army system is really the one thing stopping China from just being an S tier Civ. But uh, mm -hmm. we've got the match here and let's get you guys into game number one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the ESOC Autumn Tournament in this round of 16 best of seven. We have Kaiser Klein in the north here in the color blue, spawning as the Russians. His opponent today is none other than Soldier. Soldier is in the color red on the south side of the Himalayan map, and he is playing as the Chinese. We do see him going for an age one trading post right away, and pretty standard otherwise um, for China here. I think he's probably going to go into T export. I'd be uh, really, Northern Refugees has fallen out of favor with many China players because of the extra chopping you need to do in age one. And China already has the slowest age up time to age two in the game, other than probably like, no, yeah, they're really one of the slowest age ups in the game. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how he decides to age up. Russia here just has to go with uh, distributivism and then uh, kind of push out onto the map. We do see his explorer picking up a nice 70 wood, and that's really big for Russia. Um, you want to be getting food treasures, honestly, to help you cover that gap in between ages one and two. But wood for Russia is very nice. It'll help you get your blockhouse up earlier and get you hunting dogs in transition. T export is card number one being sent here for China. We do have 10 Keshek's Beiyang army. Uh, interesting that we have the old dynasty reforms in age four, but we have 17 arc boosiers instead of 21 shukanu. I think if you have that card in your deck, you should be opting into the units that you'll be upgrading. So interesting there. Nice food treasure right outside of China's base here. That's going to be very, very helpful for his transition. Yeah, absolutely. And he did decide to go for the more standard kind of trading post open. Now, I have seen some players go for the double village start, you know, makes that Northern Refugees a little bit more viable, excuse me, because you do get three villagers rather than the standard two. 
but I don't think Soldier wants to mess around here, right? He knows the mechanics of Kaiser Klein. He knows that in terms of micro, Kaiser Klein is probably a little bit uh, beyond what Soldier is capable of right now. And so I think he just wants to stick with well-practiced, well-tested builds and hopefully, you know, try to catch Kaiser off his game and, and maybe just be a little bit more refined since he's been playing so much recently. Yeah, and we do see him going for the Russian blockhouse. So blockhouse for blockhouse, essentially. And that's going to give him nice cover in his base, obviously, and the racks. Um, no good uh, faith agreements sent. So he did spend all of his export on that blockhouse. Um, very standard deck here for Russia. Interesting, no two heavy cannons. But typically, honestly, as Russia, when you get to the age four, you've already got such a large mass that you... Uh, I would like to also see Strelit Horde in place of six Opernix. Gives you mm. uh, five Strelits per blockhouse, and it also upgrades their range by two. Um, and when Strelits only start with 14, I would like to get my Strelits up to crossbow range at least. <laughs> so that's always right. a nice card to have <laughs> in your deck as Russia. He's already almost got 250 wood, so his transition eco is going to be fantastic. China hasn't even clicked up yet, and... This is the thing. China ages up so slowly, even with uh, the French immigrants and food treasures. So mm. he's going to have around 14 bills. He can now just click up. He's going for the Summer Palace. That is not a good Summer Palace placement. That needs to be in front next to the coin mine because that would be a right there would be a great position for that to block off any Strelets or Ruskets from coming in. And... It's, you know, you're never going to take Russia. It's got 5,000 HP. We do see the Ford Blockhouse now coming down, and uh, Russia's macroing four Ruskets. I think we're going to get a Rusket Cossack timing, maybe Rusket Strelit. We'll see what his first shipment's going to be in age two. But uh, yeah, great start here for Kaiser Klein. Yeah, absolutely. And just wanted to shout out, I think we got a follow from uh, Just Rakir. So thank you so much for that. We really appreciate your guys' support. But I love the blockhouse placement here from Kaiser Klein, even putting it in front of that trading post socket, just in case he wants to go for a, a potential TP play, which, you know, Russia does have a lot of potential to go for trading posts to bolster their economy. You know, they do have a lot of wood in the second age. They have the 700 wood, 600 wood, and they're also going to be gathering wood as well if he decides to go heavy into Strella. So we could see, you know, an eventual stagecoach play if this pressure pays off. But I think, you know, Kaiser Klein's whole objective is to just keep Soldier as cornered in his side of the map as possible and eventually starve him out. Yeah, absolutely. Blockhouse now coming down and um, China is just aged up. What a delicious 455 age up time. <laughs> <laughs> and the Ruskets are going to be sieging this MF blockhouse before it even goes up. Quite delicious, that. Or the Ruskets could just stand there, do nothing, and die. Kaiser Klein, with Ooh. his obligatory attack move, Miss Micro Bug, and he's now furiously entering in 100 APM per sec, excuse me, <laughs> APS, 100 characters per second here about how this game is dog shit. And, well, you um, know, yeah. The, the thing to the thing to notice here is that you know soldier is not doing anything out of the ordinary at all i mean look at what we see as soon as he gets aged up immediately sends the 700 coin and i don't know if he's going to try to coast on this pressure simply using sentries and tc fire gonna lose one villager for sure but you know i don't know if he's going to be able to get up fast enough before russia again can do some lasting damage here now he has built his base quite defensively maybe he has just enough macro skill and just enough gathered food under his tc to get up to h3 and not lose too many bills besides the ones he's already lost i mean he's already done a lot of great damage he's gotten a lot of idle time he has 10 ruskets now on the field and he's taken down the explorer and a villager now shipping 300 export to either switch consulates likely because i don't really think he's going to try and get cossacks out of this strelitz now being shipped steel traps coming in and he's going to have a nice 20 rusket 13 strelitz four cossack push as soldier will be trying to click up here so really really nice job by kaiser klein this is the textbook russia play and um yeah 
And just goes to show how effective it can be when it is played well. I know Russia has kind of become a meme civilization, and they're certainly maybe at one of their weakest points that they've ever been in this game's history. But they're certainly not a sieve that cannot win, even at the highest levels. And we're seeing the cost effectiveness of their infantry. We're seeing the effectiveness of those H2 units. So for any, anybody out there who's discouraged into playing Russia, just know that it is viable, maybe if not the most... Uh, OP Civ out in the current meta. Entries and Irregulars now getting popped. The Blockhouse will be going down. And um, yeah, I really, oh, Step Riders and Cossacks now coming out. This could be a great pop here because with all, I, mm, Villagers are going down. I would have liked to see this timed with the Minutemen, but uh, here oh, comes the Cossacks and Step Riders. Step Riders. Okay, this might actually work out. There's a lot of Strelits here. They're going to be so vulnerable even to these kind of crappy Step Riders, but the Ruskets doing a nice job warding them off. And I was just about to call this game in Kaiser's favor, but this might be just enough. But at the same time, it's like, look at Soldier's macro, right? Even with the 700 coin, he's nowhere close to, to clicking up to the third age. Yeah, and with the blockhouse going down, this is a huge spot of bother for China. The Keshiks are really, really poor when they don't have cards. Same with the Step Riders. And now we've got Rusket Cossack with some Strelitz mixed in, a very idled, overpopped China. And yeah, he's in a great position here to uh, keep applying Game pressure. Game one to Kaiser. I mean, maybe I'm calling it prematurely, but I don't see how Soldier gets out of this situation, right? He's got no Blockhouse, no War Academy, no Age Up. He has one shipment, but I mean, 8 Chukonu is, is going to do very little. And uh, yeah, I mean, just look at how stifled his economy is at the moment. And he's even on berries at the 8-minute mark. It's just... It's, it's just bad news all around for China, and unless he gets some sort of miracle age up into some powerful shipment, I don't see how he breaks this contain. Yeah, I totally agree. It would be really nice to see 700 wood here from Soldier, maybe make a village in the back where that herd was, because Kaiser just plopped those Cossacks on top of that hunt and just denied so much gathering time from Soldier. Um, it looks like he is... Yeah, so I'm, he's going to have to get another village here. Um, but yeah, scores are even, which is not what you want to see as someone playing against Russia. That usually means no. you're down bad. No. And, and you know, the other thing is, is just the lack of market for China also takes out a lot of soldiers' potential flexibility, right? He's not going to be able to buy any resources. He's not going to be able to trade any extra food or coin into a quicker age up. And so, you know, everything he does has to be hand gathered and it really slows you down. And I think he was really hoping to kind of take that 700 coin coast on his TC fire and get up to age three. But I just love that Kaiser, you know, he didn't pressure just in one spot, right? He was all around the base using his Cossacks, his Ruskets and his Strelitz, you know, to pressure every side at the same time. And it just goes to show you, you know, Kaiser Klein has a reputation for amazing micro for a reason. Yeah, and his mass is looking quite scary now. Soldier still not quite aged up yet, and he's going to have to go for the skirmishers, you would think, when he sees this pressure. And here comes the 10-minute timing again for the second wave timed with the nine Cossacks. And, uh, oh, man. Ooh, he's just barely trying to gather the resources. But honestly, this is a great push here from Kaiser. Yeah. I mean, even if he does, you know, what, what does he send, right? He's not going to have enough population to send any units immediately. And, you know, he's not going to be able to train any units to back up whatever he ships. And so, you know, it, it's one of those times where, yes, he's going to manage to crawl into age three, but he's not going to be doing it with any momentum. He's not going to have any tempo as soon as he arrives. He's just going to die getting to age three. Yeah, and popped once again not clicked up and he has no wood nor market as you mentioned earlier to get some resources another villager going down the cossacks are catching up to the infantry and the keshik's to snare here he needs to get his explorer in kaiser snaring with the explorer the ruskets and strelitz are taking down the chu canoes and there's only one village here on the southeastern side of china's base that will likely go down more villagers being idled by kaiser's mass and i really don't know if china uh, is he's gonna back up nope he's just repositioning 
for any potential pops here and uh 700 would now just being sent and i think it's pretty safe to say that kaiser klein is wrapping this one up with more reinforcements coming in he's now trying to age up with the skirmishers but i mean yeah, yeah, I mean, let's let let's be brutally honest here. I mean, all all kudos to Soldier for fighting this one out, but Kaiser won this game about four minutes ago, and yeah. now we're just kind of in the cleanup phase. And hey, you know, I probably wouldn't have stuck around long enough to get to H three. And of course, when you're in the tournament setting, you want to fight to the very last. You know, maybe by some miracle, Kaiser Klein misclicks and deletes his army. You know, there's there's that possibility, but unless he makes some sort of rippling mishap uh, this is you know we're gonna see a gg probably within the next two or three minutes yeah more reinforcing cossacks he's got double block house and stable production great economy behind this he's i mean 22 out of 28 villagers are now idled inside of the chinese town center um yeah, and he's just trying to poke with a couple of units in the uh explorer but truthfully the tc is a third of it's HP left, and uh, the wood has now just hit the floor. No shipments in queue. The age up won't have anywhere to go if this TC goes down, but it's just close to coming in. Yeah. He's trying to get this village down to get the shipment point for his Arc Viziers to come in. You're a man of hope. I appreciate that about you, Mongpa, but um, yeah. And Kaleli calling for a, a Russian nerf in the, in the chat. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, Russia always known as an OP sieve, but now the Vils are being cleaned up and Soldier going to Alamo this thing, fight to the very last. And uh, yeah, a really, really well executed build for Kaiser and kind of what we predicted, right? Nothing special, nothing out of the ordinary. You know, this isn't Azank or Lionheart Revolt here. This is just standard, good old fashioned Russia. And you know what? It still works. Yeah, that was a pub stomp. Um... And you don't really say that often with these high level players and just an absolute clinic on how to uh, push into somebody's base with Russia. Now, Lion did at the intro of this say that Kaiser was shaking in France looking at Julian's play, but um, my goodness, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm shaking after watching that. I don't know about you. Yeah, absolutely. Kaiser is not looking as rusty as, as some may have, uh, some may have thought, but you know, one of the things I'm seeing, uh, Red Yug put it in chat. He says he likes to play this matchup age two with China. And I wonder how much more success Soldier would have had if he had done some sort of, maybe not full commit to age two, but some sort of age two play. Maybe if he had started with seven Steppy Riders. Maybe if he had sent H2 a little bit earlier when there were only five Ruskets coming to his base. That along with some Sentry Pop, that might have been able to stop Kaiser's tempo from building. What are your thoughts on that? I actually agree. The step riders. So the biggest thing with Russia is since they have to batch train everything, you can't just get 75 food and 25 coin to queue up a musketeer. You have to gather all 300 and 100 coin and food, right? So if you get mm -hmm. any little bit of idle time, it's going to pay off and delay a batch of units coming out. The step riders can be really effective at raiding in the beginning. I think what lost him the game was sending the 300 export instead of mm. units at that point. Um, but well played to both. And yeah. yeah. And shout out to uh, Hamilton 2512X, uh, tier one, six months. Appreciate that. Half a year of subscription. That's awesome. And game Absolutely. one is in the books. 1-0 to Kaiser, uh, and I think there was one more question I wanted to answer. Oh, yeah, Zebox, the score between Julian K and uh, Keterboy was 4-0, correct? Yes, it was. All right. I, I I'm going to go to get two... some water real quick, uh, Mr. Yeah, v. Uh I'll be right back. Absolutely. And we'll, uh, we'll make sure to get uh, Game 2 set up here while we wait. You know, Joshua working hard behind the scenes, our excellent production guy. And as soon as we get the sieves for game two, we'll announce them. Ooh, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I do have the matchup for uh, game two. It is going to be Kaiser Kine playing as Ottoman versus Soldier playing as Spain. So we're seeing two potential FF sieves, but one certainly has a better capability of applying early aggression. And if Kaiser plays his Russia at all, like he plays, uh, you know, Ottoman, 
we could be seeing a good old-fashioned auto rush in the works here. I doubt we'll be seeing any church card play. That doesn't strike me as something very Kaiser. Maybe something in H3, Falk Rush, uh, but I, I really wouldn't be surprised if we see another fight in H2 from Kaiser here. Mr. V, what the V stand for? That's just my last name, man. My initial is V. Nothing uh, nothing special. There's no code. There's no Illuminati or, uh, you know, Order of the Freemasons uh, explanation behind it. <laughs> Mr. Imperial Age. I don't think I've ever been in Imperial Age in a competitive game in my life. Oh, man. Mongpa, you're back. Welcome. And yes, uh, you are just in time because, ladies and gentlemen, we are entering game two of the round of 16 best of seven. It is Soldier versus Kaiser Klein. Kaiser Klein currently ahead 1 0, and he is in the north of the map playing in the color blue as the Ottoman, and his opponent in the south of the map playing in the teal or cyan or whatever you want to call it is Soldier playing as Spain. I kind of gave my thoughts while you were gone, Mongpa. I thought that Kaiser Klein might also want to play this in age two and also play aggressively, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think we're going to see a contest for the trading post line. Kaiser's auto, he generally goes for the stagecoach play, Jan Abus. That's just, like, his plan. Like, he he's done that so many times, and I think it's going to be done again. In this instance, uh, Spain here is going to be under pressure. Kaiser, Kaiser is super, super aggressive. And if Otto, or excuse me, if Spain tries to place down a forward tower, I don't think that's going to be long for this world because Kaiser is just the most aggressive player. Um, we do see Spain sending three settlers now. Um, he has a map or a deck specifically for this map, which is excellent to see. Mm. Um, interesting deck. I do see House of Trastamara, eight pikes, 12 pikes as well, seven Huss in H4. So there is potential for very high siege and also for the Magyar, or excuse me, Hussars of Death if he decides mm. to go for Chile. Yeah, we might even see uh, a move that I have not seen being pulled off in quite some time. Now, NDE New England. Is it still possible to put naval units in the middle ponds? Yes, and that is generally the um, the one thing that makes this map so fun to play. And oh, Kaiser's stealing this treasure from Spain here. And that's Ooh, 90, 90 food, food as auto. That is humongous. Yeah, that's incredible. And that doesn't have to go into villagers at all, right? That can strictly go into helping his age up. Absolutely. And Otto getting any kind of food in age one is terrifying. He's already clicked up and um, yeah, that's just scary. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I... <laughs> they, they have the fastest age up even with, you know, standard play. It's so good. Yeah. And, you know, he, Kaiser's kind of done two things that's kind of counteracted Ottoman's usual weaknesses in H1, right? Usually their first weakness is not having enough scouting because they're always building a teepee, but he did pick up the native scout. So he's going to be able to get a lot more information than your typical auto player. And then the other thing is that auto can't usually get to any really great treasures because, again, they're building that trading post and picking up 90 food and going to be picking up another pretty substantial treasure here, 80 coin as well. So, really nicely played by Kaiser. Spain here, not yet aged up. This is a really slow age up. That's a very poor age up for Spain. Um, especially when you have two starting sheep. Um, you should be aging up at 240. No, no doubt about it. The food treasure definitely uh, hurts, you know. Uh, Spain wants to be clicking up with 15 bills most of the time. 16 is acceptable. However... Clicking up at 307 is seven seconds too late, and you're going to need every millisecond against Kaiser's Ottomans to get any chance of victory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we'll see, you know, what Kaiser decides to take this early momentum and turn it into. I do like what you said about the Jan Abus play. I don't think we're going to be seeing anything as bold as, you know, double racks, uh, Janissary rush, but... You know, Spain is one of those sieves that even if they don't get off to the best start, their FF is just so naturally fast that he still might be able to get there safely without taking too much damage. But look at that. Immediately, the barracks being slammed down in the middle of the map, protecting what is going to be two more trading posts. And so now three out of the four slots have been filled 
by Ottoman, and Kaiser is not wasting any time. Yeah, and he's going to make Jans. He's going to get stagecoach as soon as he can. And with three trading posts, I expect him to, you know, go into Jan Abyss on this map with the stagecoach potential here. Um, a double Rax could also be in the works. I mean, he's just now getting his tower down for Spain, right? And mm -hmm. Jans have been in queue for about 10, 15 seconds. And 700 coin is now coming in. He has a little bit of extra coin, I assume, for Minutemen, because he's probably going to assume that Kaiser's going to have some sort of push. Um, uh, no 5 vil potential here, I don't think. It's going to be 700 wood. And um, 5 vil is a really great transition card. I assume he's going to have to send 7 rods when Kaiser's timing comes in. But... If he can sneak in five vills safely, it would be so, so good for him. Yeah, his macro here is already looking a lot cleaner than game one, right? He's he's already getting the resources to age up much faster than we saw last time. But then again, we're also seeing the pressure come in quite a bit later than we saw the last game. And so five Jans just now getting onto the map. And I wonder if Kaiser Klein is going to be more predisposed to taking control of the TP line than doing any direct damage to Spain. Maybe he realizes that, you know what? Spain's going to get up no matter what I do. So while he does that, I'm going to take this. Yeah, and that's exactly right. He's got 10 Janissary. Stagecoach is being researched, and he will be able to get four TPs under his name. So that will be 16 villagers. And not only that, he's going to have line of sight around the entire middle portion of the map with infantry heading into age three. So his coin is now on the ground. And uh, very, very nice eco trading post semi-fast fortress here by Kaiser Klein. The adventurer is going up with the bows. So uh, eight bows will be shipping. Um, however, you know, with no 700 wood, look at his macro. He doesn't have a market and mm. he's going to have a lot of issues trying to get veterancy for some of his racks units. But um, yeah, this is, I don't. He's got a window. He's got a very small window here, Soldier does, where he could inflict a lot of damage, and if he immediately reestablishes control of the middle of the map, he could like look like a genius here. But again, like you said, with the semi-FF and the full stagecoach TP, the window that Soldier has to take advantage of this tech is going to be very short. It's already gone because Kaiser's clicking up with the Exiled Prince and with four TP stagecoach, his window to do anything is gone. Eight bows will lose to 10 Jans in open field, trying to take down the trading posts. So Kaiser's build here is looking really damn good and very strong at the moment. The bows are out and he's managed to also get two treasure tomahawks on the map. Look at that. That's, That's uh, incredible. You don't see that every day. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. I tell you what, if he's able to stare with the Explorer, he could do some potentially good damage. And he's now sending a, a fort. fort. Yeah, okay. he's going to go revolt. This is going to go into 1K wood revolt. That's the only reason you would be sending a fort. Um, Honestly, maybe position. that's the best thing to do in this situation. Try to mix things up. Go, you know, go be a bit unpredictable. Because if there's one thing that Kaiser Klein tends not to do well with is these unpredictable kind of DE style builds that, you know, tend to kind of rattle him a little bit, right? We know that Kaiser Klein can have a shorter temper. And so if he gets thrown off his game, if he's forced to play non-standard, that might actually be what Soldier needs. I do have to say though, I, I don't think this is going to work out. Um, by the time the fort goes up, uh, yeah, I mean, I really don't know if this is going to work, to be honest, because with a huge critical mass of Janissaries and Falconets, although, you know what, with the Hussars of Death time with two heavy cannons, I could see it working. But um, the stagecoach is just absolutely popping off the chain right now for Kaiser. And the scores yeah. are indicating that as well. 
Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. And I mean, he does have map control. He does have the trading post line. But, you know, again, one of the things that might work out here for Lion is that it seems like Kaiser Klein is prepared to play this as an extended age three game, right? I think he's expecting two Falks. He's expecting Skirm. He's expecting Lancer. And so if he hangs back and he lets, you know, Soldier get up to the industrial age and, and get some sneaky shenanigans off, uh, again, I, I don't want to say that Soldier's at an advantage here. He's certainly not, but I think he's probably taking the best route possible. I think he knows that he can't beat Kaiser in a standard game. Yeah, and uh, this mass is looking quite healthy here for Kaiser, and Soldier is now clicking up, sending the 1K wood, and I assume he's going to go up with the... What is he What is he aging up with here? Let's Let's see. The war marshal. Okay, so he's going to get the rods. Um, oh, did I say lion? <laughs> Chat oh, might be you calling did. me out. I did say lion, <laughs> didn't I? Sorry, this is so reminiscent of lion. Is this the soldier versus lion matchup? Because last week, <laughs> I mean, it was soldier playing all the standard stuff, and but I guess you know, like I like I saw somebody say in the chat, maybe you know, maybe lion, uh, the church of revolt converted soldier. You never know. You never know, but um. This will be quite nice if he's able to get up to the revolt. He has the required food amount. We are now seeing Ender in school being sent for the Ottomans, the all HP and attack for infantry from the barracks, a fantastic card. We are seeing Vet Abyss now in queue as well. So he's got a handful of Abyss, Falconets, Jans, decent mass. I'm surprised he's not pushing here, to be honest, at 10 minutes. Uh, kind of. Oh, OK, never mind. Spoke it into existence. He's walking on forward. Jan's walk you forward, manifested. baby. You manifested it. Yeah. But here's the thing is, you know, they're they're going to have to deal with quite a bit, right? He he will have the fort, which is going to be pretty powerful, though there is quite a bit of siege potential in Kaiser's army. So let's see how soldier defends against this. Here it comes. Are they going to impact? What are they going to target first? Go right for the oh, fort. No, those vills just getting absolutely obliterated. Yeah, where are the falcs going? Oh, okay, he's going around the fort. Smart play. Oh, you know, I actually don't like this here because he's gonna. Oh yeah, he's gonna get trapped. He's gonna get trapped so hard. Oh my God, the revolt's in. It's coming out. There it is. The chilly revolt has come. The hussars of death are on the map. And oh my God, is he gonna get cleaned here? Is Kaiser going to be is. caught on the back foot? Oh my the god. The are trying to position and split fire on the backhand side with the Falconets. The Jans are fighting against the Rods. The Huss of Death are not in the fight right now. And um, this is going really badly for Soldier. Yeah, that cliff might just be what saves Kaiser here. It forced all of those Hussars to go all the way around. They couldn't get on the Abus and they couldn't get on the Falconets, leaving the infantry to get cleaned up by the artillery. And uh, man, I think Lion was drooling there for a moment, but it seems like the result falling pretty short. That was the saddest Magyar pop I've seen in a long time. And not killing any of the Falconets is is uh is diabolical i really think he could have won the game there with that trap but um that was a horrible fight the positioning was bad he didn't focus the falconats down the husks were running around doing absolutely nothing the rods were stuck in the tree line he's gonna go try and raid but honestly like it's not really going to be too effective here his tc's gonna go down yeah and Oh man, just just uh, the right idea, but not the right execution. I, I do really think for a moment that this could have caught Kaiser off guard. But, you know, I, I'm looking at the chat here because I am not a super uh, well-knowledged guy when it comes to revolts. And, you know, people are saying that the Hussars were misused. People saying that the heavy cannons need to be present for even, yeah. you know, Soldier to have a shot in that fight. But I think oh, yeah. it was either now or never, right? He didn't really have a lot of options. It's possible that if he had waited for another shipment, he would have lost his TC. That's the thing. You need the heavy cannons to support your revolt. But the Kaiser just pushed in at the moment that he didn't have a shipment. And since he needed the 1K wood to revolt in the first place, he was unable to get his heavy cannons or factories out. And now he has no sustainable eco. 
and um, he is taking down some of the trading posts. But again, Kaiser still has his entire mass here. Yeah. Yeah, this is looking rough. I mean, it's it's weird to say that Ottoman has the the uh, far superior economy because, you know, it used to be Ottoman had one of the worst economies in the game. But yeah, I, I really don't know if Kaiser can lose this. I mean, again, he would have to make some big slip up, but his mass is looking great. He's got veterancy upgrades on all of his units. He's already kind of taking care of most of the the scary part of the revolt, right? That one big pop where all of the uh, villagers suddenly convert. And I mean, yeah, he'll he'll uh, he'll have to dodge around the map here and, and finish this out, but it's certainly looking good for him. Kaiser just now getting steel traps, kind of hilarious, considering he's been just <laughs> double pumping all of these units out. Um, and that amount of ebb is, is um, yeah, no, nah, like th that could actually just win the game against Gatling Revolutionary. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're, like, they're just so terrifying. Going for another TC now. Oh boy, yeah. I mean, he's cooked. I think Soldier yeah. knows it. Yeah. No, and I mean, hey, hats off, playing it out. Um, but yeah, I don't know what he's looking for at the moment here. Maybe he thinks he can get off some sort of really good raid, but I mean, you can't beat four stagecoach TP Ottoman with, uh, with a pretty dilapidated revolt. Oh, uh, even the Hussar is now going down. Oh, the Falks actually misfiring there and not killing the Gatling guns, but yeah, it doesn't matter. That's the GG's. 2-0 to Kaiser. Kaiser is looking in top form. I, I really was thinking he might be a bit rusty, but I have been proven severely wrong. No, that was an absolutely beauteous build executed beauteous. to the T there. Um, so good we saw you invent words. Yeah, and we did see an exact same situation where we had another auto player try that build on another on uh, the last series before and kaiser was just like yeah no i'll just do it better bro mm -hmm. do you even get do you even build tps bro like bro mm -hmm. do you even have stagecoach <laughs> and yeah, yeah uh master class there mm -hmm. yeah and this is the second time that you know soldier has been trying to be greedy with his age ups right this is the second time he's done a, a more ffe build and it seems to me that kaiser just kind of knows how to punish these builds right he knows when to take advantage. He knows how to take advantage. And then he knows when to push in, right? And uh, yeah. just goes to show, I think he's been studying his timings. Yeah, the 5.30, 7 minute, and like 9 to 10 minute mark, he's always going to be in your base. And those are the times when you're clicking up to Fortress, Industrial, or, you know, getting some shipments out. And mm. Kaiser's just absolutely executed at the highest level we do have the next matchup here and it's going to be brit versus aztec um Ooh. kaiser is going to be playing his brits against soldiers aztec hmm you know that might be where the tables finally turn this is where we might see soldier play more aggressively and maybe kaiser klein is going to play the more boomy style but you know of course brit also able to play aggressively and uh, what are your thoughts on on what we're going to see from Brit? I don't think we see any GMT. I don't think we see anything unorthodox. Just kind of your standard Brit manner boom. Yeah, that's definitely going to be pace here. Now, I think Aztec's going to have the favorable matchup in this instance because they will be able to produce the uh, Coyote Runners. So they'll have access to H2 Cavalry that is incredibly effective and mm -hmm. is... Um, just very massive uh longbows will be better than a totens and all the other infantry that uh aztec might be trying to put out however the compositions that will be in place from aztec along with the warrior priest boom on a non-tp map will mm. definitely be a mm. are we losing mongpa a little bit oh no mongpa Oh, my no. brother in arms. Uh, oh. Well, you know what? Our uh, our uh, our good pal Mongpa, we'll wait for him to come back. Uh, but until then, yes, ladies and gentlemen, game three will be Kaiser Klein's Brits versus bit. Soldiers Aztecs. Are you back, my friend? I think so. I think we're, we're back. <laughs> oh, I see your camera on the stream, so that's got to be a good sign. Yes. But...
Yeah, I mean, as you were saying, right, this uh, this is one of those matchups where, you know, I, I do think the British composition is superior to the Aztec one in, in you know, in mass, but uh, we have seen some really, really fast, scary timings from Aztec coming out in, you know, recent months. So if, if Soldier can pull off something quick, if he can catch Kaiser Klein before Kaiser Klein's really able to get that Brit economy going, we could see him grab his first win. Yeah, I totally agree. And thank you, uh, Nahul Baez or Baez for the follow. Really appreciate that. Um, looks like we are about to load in the game. They're hosting the lobby now. Um, now I think honestly we might see a really greedy boom here, Warrior Priest wise, from Soldier because mm -hmm. the potential XP that you can turn into resources or units out of that is just the most insane build for Aztec. It's the best build, their Naked Fast Fortress with Colin Macaque, where they're able to get the War Hut and then the two Nobles Huts at seven minutes. And then they can just pop out a lot of very powerful unit shipments. So I think that's what mm -hmm. we can expect here. However, uh, given that you're playing Brit, you definitely want to be applying pressure and not just let them get a bunch of manor houses down and get their economy going before that seven yeah. minute mark when the stable and hus starts to come in. Because that's when Brit gets scary, when they have their double racks and the 700 coin is in. So you start creating cavalry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And and something I want to point out just while we're waiting and I'm reading the chat here, there's, uh, there's some argument as to whether, you know, um, I have obviously Kaiser Klein showing his skills versus Soldier here, and people are wondering what kind of jump that's going to be to Julian. And I'm I'm pretty sure Kaiser and Julian have been playing recently, and Kaiser Klein has been winning. So, I mean, I I just don't want people to think that Kaiser Klein's been gone for for months on end, and he's just now coming back. I mean, he's 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 doing really really well. Yeah, absolutely. And they tend to play together a lot, as you mentioned. So. I think mechanically, in terms of micro, Kaiser's better than Julian, but Julian just has better decision making, better positioning, better base building, better game knowledge, better macro. So I think mm. those and better late game. So I think those things will really lead him to victory. Let's get you guys into game number three here, and we are underway. Let's get into it. We've got Kaiser Klein playing as the Brits in the color blue, and his opponent in the color red is Aztec. So I'm curious to see what each player opens with here. Um, the Warrior Priest is not in base for Soldier. It is going around the map with his Explorer to help gather treasures. Um, I I think that's a mistake. I know a lot of Aztec mains opt to do that, but I think you want that to be just dancing instantly right away. Um, a lot of good treasures here for Aztec to convert. Um, and he's getting the each one victory because he has the eagle scout to go around and get more um llamas for himself mm -hmm. yeah and that's going to come in really handy right not just for that extra food but you know that uh eagle scout also just providing him a lot more information right britain one of those sieves that only has the one scout and so he's only going to be able to glean so much and so it might be a little bit harder for kaiser klein to see if soldier is going with a warrior priest boom or if he's going to be putting down that aggressive war hut. Getting four llamas, and there's a fifth on the right. Oh, no, that's just the pirate. But yeah, definitely getting <laughs> a lot of value there out of that Eagle Scout already. Just missing the two at the bottom there. A little unlucky, but mm. nonetheless, he'll be happy with his age one. Getting yeah. hunting dogs as well with that hundred coin treasure. Uh, and he's got an FF deck here. Mm. So we are if, probably going yeah. to be seeing something a bit more boomy. And, you know, I wonder, this is uh, going to be probably the third time that Soldier's trying to do an FF build. And will Kaiser Klein be able to take advantage of it like he has the first two games? I don't think we'll see VC from Kaiser. Um, there's no trading post. And I think that's just there for, you know, standard deck. Um, sake, Kaiser doesn't really make decks like he has like two and they're like the ones you <laughs> can Google on ESOC and they're there yeah. and they've been there for like the past 20 years. And then yep. other than that, it's pretty much that's it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You're not, you're not going to see anything out of the ordinary, but at the same time, you know, 
um, what standard is standard for a reason. And it's been standard for quite some time and it's because it's still effective. And so Kaiser Klein kind of showing that and proving that theory. Looked up here with 16 Vils at a very excellent 228 timing here. And that's no doubt going to be because of some of the yaks and the treasuries he's picked up in age one. Um, curious. Let's take a look at soldiers POV real quick. He is again aging up with 16. Should be 14 Vils here. This is already GG. Like this is, this is really terrible. Mm. Um, I mean, you're aging up. You're not. He's not even close to aging up here. He needs to cancel this villager. It's three minutes. Brit aged up 25, 30 seconds ago. And that's a humongous difference. Like, the time that Kaiser will have over... His, oh, and he just... Oh, whoa, whoa. He leaves the 100 XP treasure on the ground. No! What are you doing? Mongpa having a heart attack live on stream. What but yeah, he didn't leave it. Is he going to pick it up? Uh, Did he just misclick? I think it was a He's shift lucky. click bug. It was a shift click bug. Get wrecked. He's lucky Kaiser Klein has not ventured to that side of the map yet. I mean, he still has time to double back and pick it up. Now, whether he notices it or not, you would be you would be thinking that, you know, a soul, uh, player at soldier's level, excuse me, would notice that he did not get that increase in XP. That's a huge huge blunder there that could be a lot of value especially as Aztec going into h2 here yeah and i and wonder Kaiser you know, gets is... 100 food treasure he's or he's up at 356 that's yeah. insane that's yeah. insane you have no Barrett's idea how good that is going down that yeah, is immediately so good. going down and he's playing this so defensively as well right a very defensive tower a very defensive barracks. And I wonder, you know, is he predicting the pressure? Does he think that the Aztec units are going to come pouring in? Or is he just going to boom no matter what Aztec plans to do? Yeah, he's going to boom no matter what. I really think it's a wise decision to do an in-base racks against Aztec because, I mean, they can just run you around with coyotes in your base. And again, you'll not have the mobility to catch them out. The Elder Age Up is almost in. He's microing his Explorer quite nicely. Oh, little Miss Micro there for the extra XP, but not the end of the world. Three Warrior Priests going to be shipment number one. He's got 1k food banked up. Uh, and the 100 XP, if I'm not mistaken, is still sitting there on the edge of the map waiting to be picked up. <laughs> that's, that's, a sad, that's a sad thing to see. Um, oh man! Yeah, yeah, you hate to see it. Just de shift click bugs. If Kaiser goes and picks that up for free, on top of the quick age up and the hundred food, and even taking fifty coin right out of Soldier's base, the ultimate disrespect when you take your uh, your opponent's starting treasure. He has steel traps before five thirty. That's so good. 700 wood is on the floor. He's now shipping 600 wood. He's on 22 villagers at 530. This is a great start. He's going to get a full batch of musketeers, maybe. Nope, only four. Not ideal, but he also has longbows already. So look at this. He's got nine units at 540. He sees that there's no pressure, really. He's identified that the war hut is in base, and he sees that soldiers mining a lot of coin. So he's gathered a lot of information to indicate mm -hmm. that soldiers going to be fast fortressing here. And Brit is completely okay with that because he's going to have, you know, twice to three times the economy by the time he clicks up. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the other thing that you, you have to mention with Brit is that he is now sending 700 wood, which means the manners are going to start falling. They're going to start falling fast. And we're going to see the vill gap between Aztec and Brit really start to grow. So even if Aztec gets into age three, you know, Brit is one of those sieves that they can almost fight age three and age two for quite some time just because of their insane economy and their good age two military. Yeah, absolutely. We are on five warrior priests now. And so that's essentially adding another 10 bills to his economy. Um, and honestly, he's chilling right now. He has nothing to worry about with any push that's going to come in at this point in the game because warrior spam is so good that he can just trade and kill pretty much everything with Warhut and TC fire alongside it. Mm -hmm. But you wonder, you know, is pushing in really what Kaiser Klein has in mind, or is he just making sure that he's able to do this manor boom safely? A little bit of both. 
Um, you want to use your units. They they should never be idle, really. And on the, on the back of this, he's going to be able to put down houses and get some eco behind it. It's all about yeah. finding that balance of making enough houses while making units, while macroing your overall economy. But here comes the warriors, and uh, they're really fucking annoying, and they just pop out every couple of seconds. They're basically <laughs> veteran musketeers. And yeah, he's just oh, warded off uh, this push here for just basically chilling. Yeah, entering age three now, and he's going to do so safely. He is going to be down about nine villagers, but you know, Aztec, does he have the eight villager shipment in his deck? He could catch up relatively quickly. He does not. So no villager shipment there, just the five vil, and he has a ton of units in age three. That, a couple of upgrades, and the infinite 900 coins. So now we need to really start seeing Soldier put on the pressure. He has the tech advantage, but he's down in economy. This is where he needs to gain momentum. Yeah, and um, this is also the time where Brit's going to start either... Okay, so he is going for the age up here. That's a nice decision. Back up, age, and then you can get into the third age with your veteran C techs quite nicely. He's on 32 vils here, um, but I, I think he's in a really bad position to be honest just because soldier has been completely uninterrupted in his warrior priest boom for the most part like nothing really happened um yeah. and these jags with invisible mode with the british explorer down in open combat and then not only that the h3 units they're just going to be able to do so much we're on eight warrior priests now he's booming and make no mistake that this boom is eco. So, mm -hmm. you know, XP is Aztec's economy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could certainly take advantage of that here. And, and the score gap is not super large. So certainly neither player, you know, losing this game just yet. But the growing British economy does have me a little bit worried. 35 bills now and still only at 130 manor pop. Has seven more potential bills that he could get out. So, and getting up to age three himself now. And we know that, you know, Brit does not have a fast age up. But once he does get there, going to slam down veteran longbow, veteran musk, and maybe even throw in falconets or some veteran hussar. And we'll have a scary army of his own. Yeah. Tenth warrior priest about halfway done. Um, now, from Brit's perspective here, um, I think longbow mixed with, I honestly don't know what you make. I think just mass longbow hussar is going to be the key. But Aztec can just go ooga booga jaguar coyote and just win. It counters <laughs> everything that I'm like. I'm sorry. Say that. In say, terms say, of, say, say that yeah, strategy the, again. He's going to go what? The, the Ooga Booga Jaguar Coyote spam <laughs> will just beat everything with attack dances. And really, Brick can't do much about that. Um, sending two Falconets now. And he has a sizable mass. That is really, really nice. And he will be getting Veteran C for his units. And that will help him, uh, no doubt, in terms of the fight coming up. But attack dance will give 22% to all of the units on the field and with good micro soldier could crush this fight yeah he certainly could and brit is you know he's not at the danger zone of running out of hunts in his base quite yet but the hunts will start getting thin here in a couple minutes and he will have to move out quite a ways to secure hunts and he will keep eating through them very quickly so eventually he'll have to push out and have to start protecting further and further resources yes absolutely Really nice positioning by a couple of those Jags in invisibility mode there. Um, he'll be able to use those to... Oh, nice warrior placement as well. Really nice, that. Mm -hmm. So what is... I mean, if you're a soldier, where do you go from here? Do you eventually try to push in? Do you try to see what Brit has? Or do you continue to XP boom? Um... Well, with this 11 trading post economy that he has behind him, all he needs to do is get out a lot of units i mean he already has knight hit points in he's got a Ato vet atonins he's now sending knight combat or uh, attack so he's gonna have super buffed units i would make a couple of uh i would make two batches of coyotes ship the 10 coyotes then you have a 20 coyotes right and then you could just push in with everything else and win mm -hmm. um it's really that simple at this point 
Yeah. And as long as you're able to take care of the veteran musk mask, your coyote should be able to go in there and massacre the longbows. One thing we have to remember about longbows, as good as they are as a unit, one of their biggest weaknesses is their lack of kiting ability. So if all of that shock infantry can get engaged, it's going to be hard for the longbows to actually get down damage and be effective. But I think Kaiser Klein, he might be looking to, to push out here himself. Maybe try to put some pressure on, or maybe just try to see what Aztec is up to. Yeah, he needs to make something happen here with all of these upgraded units. We do have the upgrade for his Musketeers that was just sent in. Um, and he's now spreading out around the map. Now, these Jags are going to be really scary to deal with, and it's going to come down to micro here. Oh, man, this mm -hmm. is not good. This is going to be so, 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 so scary, and if the Jags pop, oh, I'm going to shit myself. <laughs> oh, no. Here it comes. Yeah, they're coming out, along with more oh. Tontons and more Jaguars being trained. Here they come. Oh, come on. Pop out right on those longbows. We all want to see it. Oh, please happen. Is he going to pull out just in time? Oh, my God. That's what she said. Here they come. Oh, my God. They are going to get engaged with the longbows. They're going to start doing tremendous damage. Going right in for the Falks. Are they going to be able to get the dive in so that these Entontons can continue to take down the veteran Musketeers? I think they will take down at least one cannon here. But all of the Jaguars almost going down. And this was actually, uh, this was actually a really good engagement for Kaiser. Look at that. He's forcing them back. That was atrocious micro by soldier there. Um, the Explorer took nine jags on and the musketeers were in melee against the jags that was just I, that was really poor micro there um and he loses everything for it yeah just a handful of entonteds now and both falconets still alive and there's so much siege here that even if he takes out the falconets his town center is still likely to die look at all of the dead warrior priests the coyotes coming out now but even killing those two falconets they've already done everything they need to do Oh, massive volley, and the Toten Slingers go flying. More longbows DPSing oh, from the back line. Musketeers doing a ton of damage. And there you have it. He calls the GG. Wow. I, that just, I'm, I'm, I'm disheartened. I mean, Soldier is doing such a good job at preparing for these fights, but then the execution is just not there today. That was atrocious, Micro. Look at that trade. Look at that trade. Yeah. That's brutal. Really unfortunate there, but well played to Kaiser. Um, securing victory in game number three. And um, yeah, uh, I really think that not having Coyotes out sooner was a mistake because you know that Brit is going to yeah. start infantry and you can apply a lot of pressure around the map onto their villagers and not doing that, I think, costs him the game. Right. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see. I mean, Soldier still has some uh, some fallbacks. You know, he's. I think he hasn't played uh, some of his his more comfortable sieves yet. I, I could see him pulling out Dutch. I could see him pulling out French, and maybe he can steal one here from Kaiser. But uh, right now, it just seems like the micro, the build order, the timing. It's all in Kaiser's favor today. Yeah, um, Kaiser is. He's just executing at such a ridiculous level right now. Um, and yeah, I and Soldier isn't playing poorly either. That's the thing. He's done quite well mm -hmm. in this tournament. Um, it's just that Kaiser's on such a high level. I see Murky mm -hmm. Dawn in the chat. Stop disrespecting the players. You're literally 1400 ELO. I mean, I do have eyes and I can call bad micro when I see it, you know, and um, <laughs> you're just some nobody here. Got Twitter fingers instead of trigger fingers. So uh, I'll, I'll let you... Uh, keep that comment in the chat but Ooh. you know kaiser is just absolutely cooking right now and i'd be pretty scared if i were on the other side of the bracket facing up against him yeah and i mean if you watch the the soldier versus lionheart you know match we saw a little bit earlier he did do an excellent job but he is now fighting for his survival ladies and gentlemen we are in game four of the best of seven round of 16 it is soldier versus kaiser klein currently 3-0 in Kaiser's favor, who is playing in the south of the map in the color blue as the French. Meanwhile, his opponent who needs this game to stay alive, it is Soldier playing in the north of the map in the color yellow 
as the Brits. Probably the most traditional, most vanilla, most classic matchup you can get. French versus Brit. And if you know anything about Kaiser Klein, you know that he is <laughs> he is deadliest when he is playing France. Maybe Germany is the one other sieve that he is more well known for. Yeah, and um, a great matchup on a fantastic map between two great players. I'm excited to see this one. Uh, big food treasure there, and Soldier tried to, or excuse me, Kaiser started to micro onto that, but he was like, eh, not going to be worth it. Your TP's about to go up, and you'll contest this. Might as well get around the map, try and pick up some water buffalo for myself and some other treasures here. Yeah, yeah. And it'll be interesting to see what Kaiser goes for here, right? There's a lot of French builds. And, you know, nowadays, uh, the variety of French builds has, has gone even further up, right? Now we have some really powerful native builds. We have some really powerful uh, royal embassy builds. We've seen some really cool revolts come out. And uh, I think despite all of that, we'll probably still be seeing 14 village up, trading post, market transition, semi ff of some sort into skirm goon we do we oh we're actually seeing a 12 10 here and on this map really you, yeah you've got to be doing it you've got to be doing oh, it wow. look at all the water buffalo in base he's going to get the three cdbs out on one of these buffalo and then he's going to be clicking up at around 210 hopefully for him uh looks like it's going to be closer to 215 um but yeah this is generally because if you think about it with 1.25 uh cdbs or villagers equaling a CDB, it's essentially a 15 vil age up, right? And that's standard mm. for most civilizations. And he's clicking up at 215. So it's a really great way for you to have a great eco in age one and then get up to two with a lot of tempo behind it. He's going to have his four CDBs coming in just as he gets to age two. So very nice job here. Um, Look at that France deck, yeah. Mangpa. The, the most standard French deck you can imagine. Does have the four coves though in age four, which uh, I feel like is now a standard if you have that available as your sieve. Yeah, it's a great card. How could you turn down four culverines, you know? Yeah. Uh, especially in age four with all these shifts towards powerful artillery spikes in the late game. Kaiser clicking, or excuse me, soldier clicking up here with the governor now. And uh, yeah, he's going to be chopping away for some wood. Yeah. Oh, what is that? <laughs> Resulted Rex, aren't Mr. V and Mongpa 2K? Yeah, never even sniffed. <laughs> Maybe combined. But, uh, I think yeah, combined yeah. we are. If but, we, uh, well, separated. if we add it, we're if we add it, we're number one on every leaderboard. But yeah, sadly, uh, sadly that is not allowed. But yeah, I, I think what we're going to be seeing out of um, out of Kaiser is just very, very standard, very, very efficient French. And I like what you said about the 1210, and I like how you said you can still get a really efficient economy despite only going for the 12 villager age up. And I think what we see opening in age two is going to give us a tell of what the rest of the game is going to be. If we see something a little bit more defensive, maybe a five cap semi FF, or if we do see an FB come down in the middle of the map. Looks like Soldier is going for, or excuse me, Kaiser is going for Stagecoach here. And it's going to be a nice little eco semi, uh, no mm -hmm. doubt about that. And that's we a nice a... little way to go around your um, H2 as well. Yeah. Can we get a look at uh, Soldier's deck one more time if we haven't yet? What does he got for Brits? Very standard. Okay. He's got some anti water. Oh, oh. okay. No water that's a little own, spicy. Though. 10 Jaegers. Interesting. You don't see yeah. that every day as Brit, particularly when you have longbows. But um, I can't really uh, blame him for that pick. Jaegers yeah, are so always great upgrades. to have. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six upgrades total. Yeah, Hopefully, and uh, he's going to need a lot of them. Those out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I really, uh, I don't want to play favorites, but I really want Soldier to pull this game out. I want to see him take a game. And uh, I don't yeah. know, maybe, I mean, he's going with the, the defensive outpost. Barracks going down immediately. Looks very, very close to what Kaiser Klein was doing last game. And uh, we'll see. Probably going to open up Musket here. I like this, actually. He's identified that Soldier's, or excuse me, Kaiser's gone for two trading posts. And he's immediately queuing Pikes because he's got Stagecoach now. He has identified that. And if he's able to deny one of those trading posts and take it for himself and 
have his opponent pay for it at the same time, that would be a really, really great way for him to move forward in this game. Um, now going for the large food treasure of, okay, so it's 90 food on the left-hand side next to the trading post. The pikes are now out on the field and they will be moving towards that Northwestern trading post socket. Yeah, going to pick up that food pretty well microed there by, uh, by Kaiser. But I think these five pikes, they will probably be able to get this trading post down before Kaiser can mount any sort of defense here. And if he can get that down before it really starts to pay itself off, we have to remember that the stagecoach upgrade is not cheap. And so taking down that trading post as soon as possible will really be a boom for Soldier here. Yeah, absolutely. Nice use of his Explorer, just fighting the pikes that are sieging down the trading post. And this will, you know, take essentially 30 siege off this TP. Um, More pikes coming did, in, though. Did Soldier miss a batch there? Unless he he's splitting the pikes. Yeah, he missed a batch. That's not good. Uh, looks like he's going for the age up himself on the back of this while trying to take down the TP. Because um, he's got so many yaks there or water buffalo that he'll just eat those and then click up. So Kaiser's yeah. in fortress now and his explorer gets revived from the socket. And nice micro by soldier as well. Moving that one pike away, just keeping it alive that's going to be good value for him uh, particularly against france um but kaiser's in a great position here he aged up at around six minutes 30 with two tp stagecoach albeit the one tp we just saw went down now he's getting curs out and um oh man oh no soldier use the pikes to kill the explorer mate Oh man! Uh, oh, just like that, it goes back up. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, he bought he bought uh, what 30, 40 seconds of idle time for that TP. Uh, if and we uh, the bill counts, wood, yeah, yeah, it's it's thirty one bills right now for Soldier versus how many CDBs? Twenty one for Kaiser. So I mean, we do have to remember that Kaiser is now in age three. And did you say Soldier was going up as well? Yes, he is, but he does not have a fast age up as Brit, so he's gonna have to buy himself some time here before the curs do any big damage. I'd say Ecos are probably equal right now because two TPs equal eight Vils, and with CDBs, 21 is approximately like 27, right? So mm -hmm. you add that up, and we're at the same Vil counts here. Um, oh, my God. Oh, the curs are coming in. Yeah, eight curs right at a great moment to be pushing in. There's not a lot here, and these pikes won't be able to fight against no. this. But Kaiser, I don't know if he's going to go for it. I, it looks like he is. He's just going to say, fuck it. My curs will beat whatever these pikes are going to do. And then he's got free reign on a lot of vills here. Minutemen now being popped. He's going to pick up a cur, but he's already lost two vills for his trouble. Maybe picking up a second one. But, I mean, nice job by Soldier. He's going to drive away those curs. And for uh, for his villagers, they're not actually going to lose a lot of gathering time there. Just a few seconds. Wants to make sure that he has plenty of resources to spend when he gets into H3. Get those veteran C techs uh, down as soon as possible. And looks like Kaiser Klein following with the two Falconets here. Is the uh, is the two Falc shipment a little bit too early here? Does he have a, a enough of a mass here to protect them? I don't think it's too early. We see a massive cavalry here you know brit has mostly infantry at this point and behind this you can just train infantry from a racks and then go up with your falconets um the goons will be able to protect quite nicely the curs will be able to go tank and snare however uh positionally speaking pushing into the space will be difficult but look at all no. those vills they're getting attacked by the curs yeah at least and this one's is gonna the go thing one going down two going no oh, it saves that one that was de pathing in a nutshell doing a little shimmy going back and forth to the tc to get inside uh but yeah. just barely gets in there yeah he does have the tomahawks here they might be able to keep those curs at bay a little bit longer but now in come the two falconets and oh man soldier shipping longbows as his first card and uh i mean they're gonna do well against the dragoons but how's he gonna deal with these two falconets how is he going to deal with the curs? Um, honestly, the curs right there could probably engagement. I mean, they could probably engage, though. I don't know if they get the best trade with that many pikes and with that many tomahawks. But, 
Um, certainly going to take care of that barracks. That's going to be a nice trade for him. Might even try to take down that outpost in the market as well. Try to limit Soldier from being able to quickly trade in any resources. But the mass of longbows is growing here. And I certainly don't think that Soldier's out of this game just yet. He is now safely in age three. He can rebuild that barracks and possibly get out some more units here. Yeah, um, the longbows did not get their veteran C tech in and he's going to need that. However, okay, no, he does have another Rax in the back. He is getting veterans. He's making pikes along with this. Kaiser Klein sensing that a shipment might pop out here. So he backs up, did a lot of damage there. He's now massing infantry of his own. So he's, you know, got a really good sense of the timing here. However, Soldier is th thanking God that he backed up because he doesn't have two Falconets of his own. So no. um, buying himself some time here. Yeah, I, I like what some people are saying in the, in the chat here. If Soldier is able to effectively get up enough of a mass of Longbow Goon, he might actually be able to deal with this army of Kaisers fairly effectively. We know just in a straight trade, Longbows do trade well with Skirms, even veteran Skirms. And, uh, you know, with this many Pikes and this many Tomahawks and some Goons added, those Kurs won't be able to really dive in and do a lot of damage. Yeah, uh, truthfully, though, I don't like Longbow Goon. I think it's better to go Longbow Huss because the Huss will be on the front line dealing damage, and Longbows have to stand still. Like, they can't kite, and Dragoons are kind of built for kiting with your skirmishers. So it's a very awkward micro composition. Um, maybe add in just some musketeers as well just for some more anti-cav on the side but he's going for vet pike here sending two falconets of his own now he's got a critical mass of longbows he's starting to mass the pikes together and um yeah he's oh, actually look. in a decent spot now but look at the amount of curs that are starting to stack for france that is starting to become a disgusting amount of curs and uh i mean i don't know i if he can get a really good catch here with the Falks, okay? Soldier's Micro, it hasn't been the best this series, but he really needs to pull off something here. And if he can, maybe he can take back this game. There are quite a few pikemen. The Kurs aren't just going to want to dive into that haphazardly. Half combat is in for the goons. The Falconets are popping out on the other side. The Minutemen are also out on the field. The Falconets are in a dangerous spot here. The Pikes and the Vilpool now happening. Oh, oh I man, can't tell. all of the infantry getting blasted by both yeah. sides. The Kurs are just dealing a ton of damage. So many villagers are dying. The Pikes are getting killed here as well. And oh man, that's going to be GG, I think. Oh, oh my Kaiser God. missed yeah. the Falconets there, though. He could have easily backed those up and had the Kurs deal the damage. But and there goes and and oh boy. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's over. Kurs going to Kerr. Yikes. <laughs> Kurs go burr. Oh my God, that was insane. And I know we just had a follow there. I didn't happen to see the name. So if somebody saw who that was in chat, please let me know. I'd love to shout him out. But yeah, I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of baffled by the decision to invest in veteran Pike, right? You would think, you know, maybe they would be decent against veteran curves, but with the splash damage, they really aren't all that effective despite being the counter. Yeah, I think Musketeers would have been a better decision there. Um... Hus popping out, but it's not going to do anything. They're popping right onto Kurgoon and uh, Skirm Falk still in position here. Um, yeah. Going to be a clean wash. And that's 4-0 in favor of Kaiser. Looking to be in tip-top shape. Yeah, well played to both. Um, really interesting there, that last fight. That was a good fight by both. Um and good micro throughout that final game as well by both players. Mm -hmm. uh, Soldier just, you know, a couple of mistakes here, a couple of mistakes there. Kaiser looking in peak form, and he comes out on top. Yeah, and the thing to remember about games at this level is the mistakes do not have to be large in order for them to be critical, right? You know, even the smallest miss micro the smallest yeah, loss yeah, fight, the smallest, yeah. you know, mistake in your build order. It really can cost you the game when you're playing against guys like Kaiser or guys like Julian. All right. All right, everybody. Well, 
Go ahead, right, Mamba. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you so much, Josh, on production. Everybody give him a little clap. Pat on the back. Nicely done. Thank you, Mr. V, for coming along to cast this second series of Kaiser Klein vs. Soldier with me. It was a blast, as always. I've always said that you have the smoothest radio voice in the AoE 3 oh, community. So I'm going to need me. some ASMR videos coming up in the future. <laughs> well, um, you know what? It was weird. I was, I was just casting uh, this weekend, and I had a bunch of people mistaking me for you, and I didn't get it. But then when I heard you with Lionheart, uh, yeah, now I totally do get it. We do have a bit of a similarity. But, guys, I do want to let you know that our next uh, couple series coming up it will be on Saturday. You don't want to miss those. It's going to be Azank versus Ungers, Frontline versus Lucas, and possibly Kevin versus the only boss. And then we got Chef versus Giggs and Robrot versus Tabin on Sunday. So a lot of series coming up. Stay tuned. Act weekend. Hope to see you guys all there. And we'll catch you in the next stream or the next video. Awesome. All right. Man, a short one.